What makes America, America? Is it our ethnic heritage, our glorious human tapestry? Is it our religious heritage of spiritual freedom, our political heritage, democracy itself? No, it's our television heritage, preserved every night on Nick at Night. The richest and most rewarding heritage a man can have. These shows have made Americans what we are and will determine what we shall become. Nick at Night is preserving our precious television heritage. Everybody knows Mr. Ed. Hello. But how well do you really know him? Did you remember his birthday? Well, what's special about today? Were you there for him when he really needed you? I ate some bad hay and I got a tummy ache. Well, some friend you turned out to be. But you can still get to know Mr. Ed on Nick at Night. Get to know his favorite hobby. Those Phillies. Get to know his favorite baseball team. Those Phillies. Mr. Ed. Get to know your old friend a little better. Weeknights on Nick at Night. <laughs> Hello, I'm Mr. Red. A horse is a horse, of course, of course, and no one can talk to a horse, of course, that is, of course, unless the horse is the famous Mr. Red. Go right to the source and ask the horse, he'll give you the answer that you endorse. He's always on a steady course. Talk to Mr. Red. Have you seen it? Yeah, we've seen it. Have you tried Extra Classic Bubblegum? We've, we've tried, tried it. And do you love it? We love that great classic <laughs> bubblegum flavor. Everyone's trying Extra Classic Bubblegum with NutraSweet. Classic bubblegum flavor that lasts an extra, extra, extra long time. So if you still haven't tried it, you're missing a tremendous breakthrough. Get classic bubblegum flavor that lasts an extra long time. Introducing Storymaker, the book that lets your child create a story by choosing a picture, then pushing a button the dog. till he hears what he's chosen. Saw. <laughs> on the moon, the dog saw a goofy frog on the moon. He can create over 10,000 little stories. Mom sat on a fat cow in my spaghetti. For hours and hours of learning fun. The Storymaker from CNSA. Whoa, Ed. It's about time. I don't run on gas, you know. <laughs> you can use the exercise, Ed. You're about 50 pounds overweight. Well, that's just baby fat. <laughs> Wilbur, will you get me a candy bar? No. How about some nice water? Water? I get it. If it's free, it's okay. <laughs> Okay, Ed, open your mouth. <laughs> Wilbur Post. Why, you old son of a gun. <laughs> Carl, Carl Dickinson, I thought you were back east. Oh, no, we've been out here six months now. Bought a place over in Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills? Well, that's a pretty exclusive district, huh? Well, it's only a 14-room house. Well, I hope you're doing all right, Wilbur, because, uh, well, if you're not, I I get jobs sometimes that are too small for me. I'd be glad to throw them your way. Oh, thanks, Carl. But well, I'm doing pretty well right now. What's been happening to you? I haven't seen you for so many years. You married? To the most gorgeous little girl you ever wanted to see. Two years ago, she was Miss Alabama. Well, how about you? Married? To the most gorgeous girl you'll ever see. Two years ago, she was Miss Higgins. <laughs> Look, we ought to get together. I'd ask you over to our house, but it's kind of a mess. Uh, Blanche is redecorating, and I'm having the pool enlarged. You see, it's only 40 by 60 now. <laughs> well, you, you need a bigger one, don't you? I mean, you never know when Moby Dick may drop by for a swim. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Well, why don't you and the wife drop over to our place for dinner tonight? What's a great idea. Where do you live? 17230 Valley Spring. It's in the San Fernando Valley. The Valley? That's kind of a long way to drive, isn't it? Not when you get your pool extended. It'll just be a short swim. <laughs> <laughs> How about 8 o'clock? Great. See you then, Wilbur. Well, okay, Carl. <laughs> Come on, McTavish. <laughs>
You know, guys like him make me glad I'm a horse. Oh, Carl's okay, Ed. He just likes to blow his own horn a little. A little? He sounds like the Hollywood Freeway at 5.30. Better get home and tell Carol that we're going to have guests for dinner. Okay, Ed, get up. Hey, you kicked me. Sorry, Ed, it was an accident. Forgive me? No, not till I see the x-rays in the morning. <laughs> Suppose I did that to you. Oh, Ed, come on. New Yoplait Parfait Style Yogurt. What's to like? Three layers. Real creamy. Fun to eat. Oh, it's low fat, too. So, how do you like that? Parfait Style Yoplait. Do it for you. You could make chocolate chip cookies this way. Ooh. Or you could make them the easy way with delicious Pillsbury cookies. Then you'd have more time for things like Mambo Lessons. Don't you think we ought to have place cards? Place cards? Yeah, well, these people are from Beverly Hills. Honey, we don't need place cards. You know him, I know you, and who's ever left over must be her. <laughs> Darling, will you please relax? I have a beautiful dinner prepared. I am relaxed. That's in. That's in. Now, honey, don't get calm. Keep nervous. Carl's an old friend. You'd think it was the king and queen of England. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> It's the king. It's Carl. <laughs> Hello, Wilbur. Well, come on in. Wilbur, I... I'd like to have you meet my wife, Blanche. Oh, I... It's a pleasure. <laughs> I'd like you to meet my wife, Carol. Carol, this is uh, it's Blanche. How do you do, Mrs. Dickens? Hello there. It's Carl. Hello. Hello, Carol. Say, Wilbur, you got yourself a pretty wife. By golly, you're right. I understand you were Miss Alabama. That's right, honey. Well, I'll tell you, she should have been Miss America. But what chance does a southern girl have with six Yankee judges? <laughs> Who uh, did win the title? Oh, Miss Georgia. <laughs> oh, oh, here, let me help you. Well, thank you. Oh, my, what a beautiful mink stole. Well, thank you, honey. Uh, I was going to buy my wife a fur coat, but Carol says, who needs a fur coat in California? <laughs> Carol who? <laughs> Gee, funny. Well, won't you sit down, please? Uh, Blanche? Yeah. Carl? Thank you. <sighs> oh, um, would you care for a, a champagne cocktail? Maybe later, Wilbur. Well, since you like champagne, uh, may I recommend Verdun Bleu 29? A little dry for our palates. <laughs> How do you feel about Napa Valley 61? Domestic stuff. Well, the way I feel about it, why buy French champagne to get an American hangover? <laughs> Carl, honey, your friend is funny. <laughs> Dinner will be ready in a few minutes. Oh, it's no hurry, Carol. Say, you two have a very cozy place here. We like it. It's real cute. Looks just like our guest house. <laughs> well, Carl, you haven't changed. You look the same as you did in college. Ah, those were the days. Remember we played that big game against State? I ran the opening kickoff back for a touchdown? <laughs> yeah, you, you were a big hero. Well, you made some pretty fancy runs yourself that day. Wilbur, you never told me you were on the football team. Oh, sure. Whenever the team called time, he ran out with the water bucket. <laughs> <laughs> never spilled a drop. Same old Dippy. Dippy? Well, that's what the team used to call him. He always had the water dipper in his hands. <laughs> Dippy? Isn't that just too old, precious? How oh, sweet. <laughs> well, excuse me, dinner should be ready now. Oh, Wilbur, would you bring in the water? Ah, that's what he was famous for. <laughs> that was 
a good dinner. Your wife's a wonderful cook. I'm glad you liked it. I'm sure your wife's a good cook, too. No, she doesn't cook at all. No? No. You know, Carl, you've, you've really done very well for yourself. I've heard nothing but wonderful things about you. Oh, really? Uh, who from? You. <laughs> <laughs> Same old dippy. <laughs> hey. This is where your office is? Yeah. Come on in. You know, there's one thing I've always said, Wilbur. Well, gonna... You wake Ed. Ed? That's Ed. <laughs> Who is he, your partner? Poor Ed. We're getting plenty of work out in the park today. Why, well, I, I didn't realize this was your horse. I thought it was some plug you'd rented. Plug? <laughs> it happens to be a registered Palomino. There isn't a finer horse in California. Oh, you're kidding. Now, I own a horse. Well, you saw McTavish this morning. Oh, yeah. What a bad-looking nag. Nag? Why, I'll have you know that he comes from a long line of Scottish champions. His father won the Edinburgh sweepstakes three years in a row, and his mother never lost a steeplechase in her whole racing career. Well, you may not believe this, but when I go riding with Eddie, he jumps over everything in sight. Shrubs, benches, people. Why, he must be part registered kangaroo. <laughs> Nobody can outjump Ed. Come on, Dippy. A little fresh air will sober you up. I mean it. <laughs> I'm uh, thinking of taking Ed abroad. I want to enter him in one of those English steeplechases. Why bother taking him abroad? My equestrian club is giving a horse show. The main event will be a steeplechase. Now, why don't you enter your horse? It'll be on the 16th. Well, on the 16th? Yeah. Wait. wait. Oh, I just thought of something. Uh, wait a weasel out? Yeah. No. I have a, a, a dental appointment on the, on the 16th. Oh, you're going to the dentist? 16th. On Sunday. Well, I, I usually get a toothache over the weekend. You know, for a minute there, you almost had me convinced old Lardbelly in there could jump. Wait a minute. I changed my mind. We will enter that meet. Good. Now I won't have to guess. I'll know who's coming in last. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, let me tell you something. Ed could outjump that at McTavish of yours with one foot tied behind his back. Oh, really? Well, would you like to make a little bet on your horse? How little? Say five bills? Five bills. That's a bet. <laughs> Another day, another bale of hay. Morning, Ed. Look, I'm uh, sorry Carl Dickinson woke you up last night. The nerve of that guy calling me an old plug. Yeah. He, uh, he called you old lard belly, too. Uh, but, uh, I guess you'd do anything to get even with him, huh? Wouldn't I? Uh, I thought so. That's why I uh, entered you to compete against his horse in the steeplechase on Sunday. Uh, the uh, steeplechase? Isn't that where they jump over those big hedges? That's right. You entered a plug like me, old lard belly. You said you wanted to get even with him. Well, suddenly I feel very forgiving. Oh, no, you can't back out. I mean, don't, don't tell me you're scared, that you're yellow. Well, I don't know, but I'm in there someplace. Ed, I know you can beat this McTavish. Why, you're twice the horse he is. And three times the coward. Please, Ed, I want you to beat my friend's horse for, well, for personal reasons. And uh, I want to stay alive for personal reasons. Mother, you in there? Yes, right. Yes, Carol tells me you're entering Mr. Ed in the horse show. That's right. What's he going to do? Keep the flies off the other horses? Ed is going to be in the steeplechase. The steeplechase? Look, Rog, I know that Ed is not known as a jumper. He's not even known as a walker. <laughs> Wilbur, what madness possessed you entering old Fatso in the steeplechase? <laughs> When is this horse show? Sunday. Take my advice. Leave town Saturday. <laughs> oh, 
Old fatso, huh? I'll show him. Ed, you'll enter the steeplechase? If you'll be the jockey, I'll be the horse. <laughs> That's a deal. Let's shake on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, it's okay. I'll, thanks. Hello. Hello, Wilbur. This is Carl. Say, how about being my guest tomorrow at the Beverly Hills Country Club? Golf, lunch, everything on me. You know, you'll be living. Well, thanks a lot, Carl, but I've got to get Ed ready for the steeplechase. I'll be working him out all day tomorrow. Oh, you're kidding. Now, your horse is no match for McTavish. As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to release you from our bet. What's the matter, Carl? Are you getting worried? Worried? Well, this is going to be the easiest 500 bucks I ever made. <laughs> well, see you Sunday, Dippy. <laughs> Dippy. Easiest five hundred. Five hundred? Something wrong, Wilbur. I just found out I I bet five hundred dollars on you to win. Five hundred? That's a lot of hay. Ed, do you think you stand a chance against McTavish? Suddenly I I, I feel like an old plug again. <laughs> Well, my girlfriend told me she got her boots at Payless. I thought she was kidding. I mean, come on, Payless? I mean, these were really hot boots. So I checked it out. She wasn't kidding. These were really hot boots. Fashion boots, sport boots, western boots. I gotta say, Payless is definitely happening. Hey, I didn't believe it either. Believe it. Now at Payless, really hot boots are on sale starting at just $14.99. For styles, you've gotta see to believe. <laughs> Who'd have guessed? Payless. It's got something to every screen For your viewing pleasure A TV viewer's dream this election day, Nick at Night wants you to vote. Then come home to election night on Nick at Night. You won't get up to the minute returns, but you will get eight episodes packed with election drama. Petri for City Council, the great Patty Cathy debate, and a campaign promise you can count on. I believe in something, I speak out. Later, if I change my mind, I'm not afraid to speak out again. Do your part and watch election night on Nick at Night, Tuesday night at 8, 7 central. Brought to you by Sears Portrait Studios and Energizer Batteries. Why'd you stop, Ed? Hey, we gotta get that weight off you. You got another 20 miles of road work. Wilbur, I'm nothing but skin and bones now. <laughs> stop complaining. This will be the first race where the jockey weighs more than the horse. You wanna back out? No. My mother taught me never to be a quitter. Add up, boy, Ed. But sometimes I wish I'd listen to my father. Old Yellowback. <laughs> Come on, Ed, let's go. Come on. Okay, Ed, let's try it once more, shall we? All right. <laughs> this thing gets heavy, you know. One, two, three, four. Ouch. How about some chow now, Wilbur? Not yet. We've still got 28 pounds to take off. Let's split it. 14 pounds each. That's enough steam, Wilbur. I smell something cooking, and I think it's me. We've still got 12 more pounds to lose. I'll come out of here a pony. Tighten up some of that lard back there. Tighten up. You're turning it into butter. Oh. <laughs> now that your weight's down, I want to show you some jumping techniques. You really think this movie is going to help me? Ed, I went to a lot of trouble to rent these films. Yeah. I want you to study the style of these jumpers, particularly. Uh, Once uh, you catch on to it, it's a cinch. You ready? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Uh, roll them, Wilbur.
Hey, <laughs> looks like fun, doesn't it? Yeah, seems easy enough. See how simple it is, Ed? You just tuck the front legs under and let your powerful haunches lift you lightly and gracefully over the obstacle, clearing it neatly as you... Uh-oh. Uh oh Oh, my aching back. I think we can turn those lights on now. Relax, Ed. Those pileups don't happen very often. Just once is enough, buddy boy. <laughs> Don't worry. You got nothing to fear but fear itself. And I'm just loaded with that stuff. <laughs> Ed. Ed, will you listen to me? There's nobody in here but us chickens. <laughs> I was... Wilbur, what's wrong? Carol? Sit down. You always tell me to sit down when there's some bad news. I can take it standing up. What is it? Carol, that $5 bet I made with Carl is $500. <laughs> Wilbur, how could you make such a bet? It was a misunderstanding, but I'm stuck with it. You're not stuck with anything. You get right on this phone and call Carl and tell him the bet is off. Now go on. Honey, I, I can't back out now. Why not? You know he's going to beat you. Well, that was Carl's major in college, beating Wilbur. And everything I tried, he, he beat me. He beat me out of baseball, basketball, football, track. He got everything that I wanted. You know, if he'd known you and I did, I'd still be a bachelor. I would have picked you over him in a minute. Oh, thanks, honey, but I probably won't win on Sunday, but I'd like to give him a run for his money just once. I'd like to see you do it too, darling, but I don't want to see either of you hurt. Oh, no, we'll be all right. I've been working with Ed, and he's, he's pretty good. <laughs> How about some dinner? All right, Wilbur. I love you. Better have a light dinner if you're going to be on my back. <laughs> Ed! Then you're with me. All the way. That big mouth has beaten you for the last time. Oh, thanks, Ed. A man never had a better horse. Uh, that's true. <laughs> One thing, Wilbur. Yeah? When we take that first jump, keep your eyes open. Because mine are going to be closed. <laughs> oh, Ed. <laughs> now, don't get sloppy. <laughs> Let's go, Ed. We'll take that first jump. Ed, you're supposed to jump over the hedge, not eat it. Well, it looks so high. I thought I'd nibble it down a few feet. <laughs> More than five feet. I could hurdle this myself. I got a feeling that's just what you'll be doing. Ed, if you don't feel that you can do it, well, I'll forfeit the bet. No, sir. I'm not going to let that guy push your face in the dirt anymore. Had a boy, Ed. All we have to do is think of a graceful way to weasel out. Will you make up your mind? Hey, here comes Carl now. Hey, I must admit that McTavish is a beautiful horse. He doesn't look very bright. Hey, Wilbur, invite Carl over for a cup of coffee. Not why. Don't ask questions. I've got an idea. Go ahead. Wilbur, what are you doing out here so early? Oh, just checking the course. I thought this barrier could be a little higher. Well, the first one is always the smallest. They get bigger as you go along. Oh. Uh, how about a cup of coffee? Good idea. I'll buy. 
Come here, McTavish. We'll just deduct it from the 500 you could owe me. Oh. Dippy old boy. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee, Carl. Well, forget it. Well, I think I'll take McTavish through a couple of jumps just to show you what you're up against. Fine. <laughs> Come on, McTavish. <laughs> Ed, what did you do? Never mind. Just don't laugh before it happens. Well, what happens? Well, let's stand over there and just watch. Show him a good jump, McTavish. What did you do? I got McTavish to join my club. Cowards Anonymous. I guess my horse got spooked at something. I'll have to scratch him from the race. Oh, that's a shame. Wilbur, I'm gonna have to give you a check. Ah, forget about it, Carl. You really never stood a chance at all. You see, there, there isn't another horse in the world like my Ed. <laughs> oh. Remember one thing. Dippy the water boy finally beat you. <laughs> yeah. Upon learning, Little Caesars is offering two pizzas for $5.99, the mind enters five stages. Shock, disbelief, confusion, denial, and finally, acceptance. Now let's watch the subject registering denial again in extreme slow motion. Two medium pizzas with cheese and pepperoni or your favorite topping, all for $5.99. It's a toozy doozy of a deal. Toozy doozy. Sure, you had the easy life, but you blew it all. It was just one game, Warden. But the name of the game is don't go to jail. You gotta roll those dice, form as many groups as you can. But if you roll go to jail, you lose it all. Don't go to jail. The Monopoly Dice Game. <laughs> Ed, you don't have to do this, you know. I've got to find out if I'm a jumper. No. Okay, but be careful. I don't want you to hurt yourself. Hold tight now. One of us may never come back. <laughs> Wilbur, say giddy app. Giddy app. Get off, Wilbur. I think I'm going to faint. Uh. <laughs> a horse is a horse, of course, of course. And no one can talk to a horse, of course. That is, of course, unless the horse is the famous Mr. A. Go right to the source and ask the horse He'll give you the answer that you endorse He's always on a steady course Talk to Mr. A People yakety-yak a streak And waste your time a day But Mr. Ed will never speak Unless he has something to say A horse is a horse, of course, of course And this one will talk to his voice is horse You never heard of a talking horse? Well, listen to this I am Mr. Ed. This has been a Filmways television presentation.
Many pregnancy tests had the same problem, little cups. Fill the cup? But Clear Blue Easy is just one piece, one step. No little cups to fill or spill. Give up the cup. Try Clear Blue Easy. One step easy, one step sure. 50 stories up without a net is no place for a nap. So when one of these guys gets a bad cold or flu, which medicine would you recommend? One with an antihistamine that can cause drowsiness or Sudafed severe cold formula? The one that lets you stay alert. No daytime cold and flu product has more maximum strength medicines. For non-drowsy relief, depend on Sudafed severe cold formula because people depend on you from the makers of Sudafed. And welcome our next contestant from Cincinnati, Ohio, Mary Haney. Yes, you, Mary. This is your chance to enjoy a more colorful life by subscribing to TV Guide. Now let's show Mary what you'll get with TV Guide. To start, you'll receive complete listings for network, local, cable, and pay TV. You'll also get special features, movie reviews, a sports calendar, inside stories, and more. Okay, Mary, are you ready to go for it? Home audience, you two, join Mary, get TV Guide. Johnny? Call toll-free 1-800-821-6100 to get 30 weeks of TV Guide in your mailbox. 1-800-821-6100. Pay in three easy installments of just $7.17 each. Send no money, you'll be billed later. Call now, 1-800-821-6100. Congratulations, Mary. The subscription to TV Guide is yours. Tonight, Nick at Night presents The Mary Tyler Moore Show, followed by Dick Van Dyke and Ben Dragnet. Nick at Night, preserving our television heritage. Mary's Parents' First Appearance, guest starring Nanette Fabre and Bill Quinn. can turn the world down with her smile Who can take a nothing day And suddenly make it all seem worthwhile Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it With each glance and every little movement you show it Love is all around, no need to waste it You can never tell why don't you take it If I were going to create the perfect place, I'd start with the north. I would carve out rivers and rolling hills, then ride the moon south and warm the skies with a tropical sun. I would dot the west with little hometowns and fill the east with excitement. Right in the middle, I'd put a great big playground. I would surround it all with water, from coast to coast to coast, and I'd give it a name, Florida. There's someone in your house. Good evening. I'm Alfred Hitchcock. It's Alfred Hitchcock presents Every Night on Naked Night. Hey, Murray, listen to this. Roy L. Scutch of Winnebago got a surprise yesterday when he harvested his crop and found an 11 pound turnip. Now, what's so amazing about that? We have a 165-pound vegetable doing the news every night. You know, Marie, it seems to me there are a lot of stories like this that we don't think are so important, but other people just might find interesting. Uh, the only way we'd do that story, Mary, if Roy Scutch were killed by an 11-pound turnip. Oh, Marie. Here's some changes. What are you cutting out? Oh, nothing. It's... Nothing? <clears throat> well, it's just, uh... An idea for something I thought we might do on the show. Okay, let's hear it. Well, uh, it's going to be a surprise. Surprise me. Uh, surprise. Newsroom. Uh, just a moment, please. It's for you, Mr. Grant, New York. Come on, come on. What's your idea? Mr. Grant, I'll tell you later. Oh, all right. But don't forget, because I still want to hear about it. I got it. You're going to suggest Ted interview the turnip. <laughs> 
to me we should do funny little human stories like this every once in a while. I mean, if the newspapers can do it. What are you guys talking about? Newspapers. Oh, I don't care much for them myself. Well, he's very blasé now, but you should have seen him run in and grab the paper when he heard Nancy and Sluggo broke up. <laughs> All right, you guys, kid around, but I've got very good reasons for not liking the newspapers. Oh, well, what are they? One, they're competition. And two, I always get that black stuff over my hands after I read them. <laughs> and when people watch my show, they don't have to wash their hands. Oh, terrific, Ted. We can advertise the six o'clock news. Doesn't get your hands dirty. <laughs> 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 it doesn't get your hands dirty. Hey, that's a good one, Mary. <laughs> did you hear that, Mary? Oh, come on, Ted. It wasn't that. Fun. Hey, did you guys just hear what Mary said? <laughs> I'm gonna tell this to Lou. <laughs> what can you expect from a guy whose favorite Mark's brother is Zeppo? Murray. Dr. Walter Reed Richards was honored with a dinner last night by the Roseburg Medical Association. Dr. Richards announced his retirement after 21 years as chief of surgery for the Roseburg County Hospital. I don't believe it. Murray, this is my father. Oh, Mary, you're kidding. I, I got a call home. Why didn't they tell me anything? Well, maybe they promised the newspaper a scoop. I talked to my mother three times last week. Wouldn't you think... Hello, Mom. It's Mary. Listen, Mother, how come you didn't tell me that Daddy was retiring? He didn't tell you? Well, yeah, I, I guess that's Dad. <laughs> well, uh, what are you gonna do? What are you planning now that you've got retirement to look forward to? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, and what about later today? <laughs> Mom, I mean, what are your plans? Oh, you are? Uh, yeah, that, that's terrific. When? Okay. All right, Mom, uh, call me later then. Right, bye-bye. Huh. What are they going to do? They're moving. Here. Mary, Don McDonald's joining me for lunch tomorrow, so make sure I have enough ice. Well, there you are, Lou. Lou. <laughs> you want to have a good belly laugh? Mary and I were talking, and I said, when people watch my show, they don't have to wash their hands. <laughs> and then Mary said... Well, Mr. Grant, it really wasn't funny at oh, all. Oh, come on, don't louse it up, Mary. I said, when people watch my show, they don't have to wash their hands. And then Mary said... We can advertise that the 6 o'clock news doesn't get your hands dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you said? Yeah. That isn't funny. <laughs> Come down off your bar stool. You want to go out and grab a sandwich? Oh, gee, I'd love to, but I can't. My parents are coming. Oh, wonderful. How long are they going to stay? Well, they're moving here. Can I have my wonderful back? Rhoda. Mary, do yourself a favor. Tell them to stay where they are or, or, or go someplace else or anything but come here. Rhoda, I could never do that. Well, then I'll do it. Don't worry, I'll make the call anonymous and in very good taste. It's too late. They've already left. They'll be here any minute. Mary, you have got to send them back the minute they get here. Listen to the voice of experience. When I lived in New York, my parents kept following me all over the Bronx. I'd move, they'd move. Once I told them I was moving, they moved, and I didn't. <laughs> I thought I finally lost them, but no, they picked up my trail. So what could I do? You moved to Minneapolis. I moved to Minneapolis. <laughs> Rhoda, it doesn't have to be that way. My parents and I have always gotten along just great. My mother is terrific. Uh-huh. No, really. My dates used to like her as much as they like me. Oh, that's swell. There isn't enough competition running around. <laughs> but tell me, Mia, these uh, perfect parents of yours, did they ever bring up the subject of why you aren't married? Well, uh, not directly. Every once in a while, my father used to mention that he was the only department head in the hospital who didn't have any grandchildren. <laughs> was that uh, his <laughs> or yours? Oh, no, that was his, just to let me know he was kidding. <laughs> hey, Rhoda, you remember that party I gave and your date made those dumb paper airplanes? Yeah. <laughs> Little souvenir. <laughs> Hey, you know, I haven't seen him for since that evening either. See if he's up there, huh? <laughs> Boy, no wonder I hadn't seen him. Here's my phone number. <laughs> Will, what do you think? How does the apartment look? Clean enough? Clean enough for what? For my father. 
You see? Do you see what's happening? They aren't even here yet, and you are cleaning an already clean apartment. Huda, it's just that my father's never been here, and I want the place to look clean. So uh, how tall is your father, anyway? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's because Daddy's in surgery, but he's always been very particular about everything he comes in contact with being germ-free. Oh. Where are you going? i got to boil my sweatshirt. <laughs> Hi. Now hug your father first, because I'm going to take time with you. <laughs> Hiya, Dad. How are you, Bones? <laughs> oh, uh, Mom, honey. Uh, <laughs> it's so good to see you. It's so good to be oh, here. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, doesn't your father look great? You'd never guess that he's 16 years older than I am, now would you? <laughs> That's a new record for working it in fast. Uh, oh, honey. It's so terrific to be here. Remember the last time I was here and we went shopping together and people mistook us for sisters? Yeah. I always loved that. <laughs> hey, now, Walt, Walt, isn't this a darling place? Yeah. What are you paying, Mary? About a hundred? Uh, yeah, about a hundred. And? Thirty? Uh, five. In Rollsburg, you can get a whole house for that. No, you can't. That's what our house payment was. No, 135 wasn't our house payment. That was our phone bill. <laughs> Mary, this place, does it have a John or is it in a hole? Uh, yes, Dad, it has a John. It's right in here. I want to wash my hands. Dad, I'm a big girl now. You don't have to say that anymore. Oh, yes, I do. I got him filthy on that banister out there. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, honey, we're going to have to start looking for an apartment soon, and I want a place just like this, only bigger and newer. Well, I'll uh, take you around on Sunday. It'll be fun to see all the apartments I couldn't afford. <laughs> How do you think you're going to like living in Minneapolis? It's going to be pretty different from Roseburg. Right. Mary, I want you to know that moving here wasn't my idea. It was your father's. Oh. What are you going to do, Mom, now that Dad's retired? Well, I kind of thought I'd go back and finish nursing school. Oh, Mother, you've been saying that for years. Well... That's your mother's way of reminding everyone just how young she was when we got married. <laughs> you know, Dad, I was really surprised you decided to move to Minneapolis. Mary, it wasn't my idea. Oh, but Mother said... Oh, this is good cheese, Mary. What kind is it? It's so different. It's called American. <laughs> Walt, would you like some American cheese? Uh, no, no thanks. Uh, Mother, didn't you just say that... Walt, Walt, you've got to admit now that Minneapolis offers a bigger variety of things to do now, doesn't it? Walt. Mary, isn't that the plate I got for your mother at the Seattle World's Fair? Yeah. Had an inscription on it that said... Um... Seattle World's Fair? Yeah, something like that. Read the back. Oh, yeah. To Dottie from Walter. <laughs> Your father's the last of the romantics. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Mary. Hi. <laughs> I uh, could come back after inspection. Rhoda. <laughs> hey, I was thinking about that idea you were going to give me. You know, your surprise? Yeah, you were? Yeah. I knew it had something to do with the paper. Then I figured it out. You're going to suggest that we replace Ted by televising newspaper clippings, uh, aren't you? No, Mr. Grant. Oh, that's too bad, because it's a good idea. <laughs> What's your suggestion? Well, I was going to work up a whole presentation for you, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I haven't had the time. Um, well, anyway, what I thought we might do is just use stories like this on the news. You mean to say we missed out on the turnip story? <laughs> okay, Mr. Grant. Biggest turnip story of the century, okay. and we missed out on it. Okay. Sorry, Lou. It was either that or the yam that looked like Millet Fillmore. <laughs> I blew it, Lou. An honest, honest mistake. Well, don't let it happen again. Well, if you like it that much, I'll type it up for you, Lou. Yeah, this is this is what I love about working here. I mean, you guys are just so much fun. After that, you're still looking for cute little stories? I'm looking for a cute little apartment for my parents. Oh, what part of Minneapolis are you looking in? St. Paul. St. Paul? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's nice over there. It's, um, it's quiet. 
Over there? And it's over there, right? Business. It's not that I don't love them, you know? I mean, I really have enjoyed this last week with them. It's just that I, I think I've outgrown spending all my free time with them. Yeah, I know what you mean. Do they have any friends here? No. Hoping I can find an apartment with some friendly people. You're looking for a friendly apartment, Mayor? Why don't you move into my building? Oh, well, gosh, Ted, I don't think I could stand all that happiness. <laughs> anyway, it's not for me. It's for my folks. Well, it's still all right. There's plenty of vacancies. I wonder why. <laughs> anyway, Ted, don't you live in one of those swinging singles buildings? Yeah, it's swell. We've got a social director, sweet rolls on Sundays, volleyball tournaments. Of course, I'm the biggest celebrity there. Oh? The guy with the chimp must have moved. <laughs> my mom lives there, too. Y your mom? Well, she's single. But she was married once, wasn't she, Ted? Oh, sure. Everybody loves mom. If, if your folks move into the building, they'd love her, too. Yeah, well, the thing is, they're not single, Ted. Oh, yeah. Well, if they ever decide to break up, send them over. <laughs> He's a happy man, Murray. I know. It drives me crazy. <laughs> Excuse me, is this where... Oh. Hi, Mary. Dad! Hi! What are you doing here? I was at the hospital right around the corner. You were at the, the hospital? Is anything wrong? Uh-huh. Oh, just dropped in to watch a couple of operations. Well, how were they? Fair. Uh, they don't even give you a private office, huh? Oh, well, Dad, see, a newsroom is like that. You know, everything's sort of out in the open. Nobody has any secrets, so nobody needs an office. Um, except for Mr. Grant. He's got a, you know, not that he has any secrets or anything. He's just, you know, got a, um... And, uh, Murray, this is my dad, Dad Murray Slaughter. Uh, Mary talks about you all the time. It's Murray. a pleasure. Thanks. This is really a nice surprise. Come on, I'll buy you lunch. Oh, gee, Dad, I'd like to, but Well, I'm... if you can't make it, I, uh, I understand. No, 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 no. I'll rearrange a few things. Hey, right. I got a couple of apartments that I think are kind of interesting. Oh, we already rented one this morning. You did? Mm -hmm. Uh, here in, uh, Minneapolis? Yeah. Where else? Oh, well, no, I was just thinking it might be over in, uh, St. Uh, well, whereabouts? Well, after we, uh, had breakfast with you this morning, we just drove round and round until we found this place. I've got the address right here. Dad, that's right around the corner from my place. She couldn't find anything in your building. <laughs> McDonald's knows that in today's economy, taking a family to dinner is harder than ever. But now the Big Mac Extra Value Meal is only $2.99. And the Hamburger Happy Meal is value priced. So at McDonald's, it's easy to feed any size family. Well, Mother, this is really something. Was it all worth it? A meal like this for only $2.99? You bet. <laughs> You're something else, woman. What you want is what you get. It comes tonight. All right, Gladys, from the top. Though we know you love butter, Fleischman's found something other. It's Ooh. over butter. All the smoothness of butter with a rich, creamy flavor. New Ooh. over butter. It's either move over butter or nothing at all. With sweet, creamy buttermilk, zero cholesterol. Move over butter. New move over butter from the folks at Fleischmann's. Hey, look, Jen. Jen, I thought we were playing hearts. <laughs> Mary, great dress. Yeah? Where are you going? Oh, dinner party. You going out again tonight, dear? You were out so late last night. Gosh, Mom, I don't think 11.30 is so late. <laughs> well, I guess I'd better be going. Hey, Mayor. Honey, do you have an extra key? Why, are you going to come back tonight, Mom? Well, uh, Phyllis has had let me in a couple of times the past few days, and I, I really didn't want to bother her. Oh, well, it's no, it's no bother. Phyllis, Phyllis doesn't mind doing things like that. Well, good, I'll get her to make me a key. Hey, Rhoda, yeah. would you like to go to a movie later? Sure, as long as it's not one of those sexy ones. You know, all those naked bodies just remind me of work. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what is it you do, dear? Uh, oh, mannequins. I dress mannequins in a store window. <laughs> Thank heavens. <laughs> Well, have a good time, honey. What time do you think you'll be home? Ah, uh, gee, I, I don't know, Mom. <laughs> well, have a good time anyway, dear. 
And don't forget, tomorrow's a working day. I won't. Hey, Rhoda, I'll pick you up at 8, okay? Good deal. And listen, I'm not going to change. Oh, no, me neither. Be prepared. They'll take us for suspense. <laughs> Probably, though. Bye. So long. Gee, I can hardly believe she's your mother. Yeah? Why? Oh, Mary, she's so young. She's, she's just like a, a regular person. If my mother was here, she'd be driving me crazy. Rhoda, she's driving me crazy. Yeah. I know. Does it show? You think my mother knows? They never know. <laughs> Mother. Who is it? Rhoda, can you give me a list of work? My car has got the Asian flu. Yeah, sure. So, uh, Mary, you going to a formal breakfast party? No. It's got home. Must have had some great time. Look, Rhoda, whatever I did, it's my own business, okay? That good, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry, that wasn't meant for you. So, uh, who was it meant for? For my mother. Ah. Every time I come home late, the phone is ringing. When I pick it up, the person on the other end hangs up. Rhoda, my mother is checking up on me. Ah, oh, I broke my zipper. You see? Every time you yell at your mother, God makes you break your zipper. <laughs> Look, I realize that she's the best mother a person could have, but no matter how hard she tries, she's still my mother. You know what I mean? I know what you mean, kid. Look, it goes with the territory. I feel every time I'm going to be late coming home that I have to call her so she doesn't worry. Who would have thought it? What? This happens to Protestants, too. <laughs> I would just like to be able to go out and stay out all night if I feel like it without coming home and finding the phone ringing. Uh, you're wearing shorty nightgowns to work these days? Work. Work! Work. <laughs> Rust. Mother, what are you doing here? Well, I had some extra meatloaf left over, and I knew you'd be tired and wouldn't feel like cooking. You, uh, just happened to know that I'd be tired, huh? Well, you worked all day, didn't you? Look, you can barely hold your eyes open. Mom, my eyes have never been opener, and as uh, for the dinner, thank you, but, but I have a pizza. Oh, Mary, you can't eat that. Mother, I'm going to eat my pizza. <laughs> okay. Okay, you can have the meatloaf tomorrow. It's always better when it's left over anyway, so I'll just leave it over. I'll be just on my way out anyhow. Hey, Mom. Huh? Um, thanks for the meatloaf. I made it just the way you like it. How was your date last night? Fine, thanks. What did you do? Mother, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I know what it is. Ah, uh, what? You always get cranky when you're sleeping. You've been like that ever since you were a baby. Mom, listen, I'm not a baby anymore. See, I, d I don't need my mommy bringing me meatloaves, and I especially don't need her checking up on me every minute. I haven't been checking up on you. Oh, come on, Mom. What, what do you call this meatloaf if it's not checking up on me? Maybe I have been around here too much, but... It it's not because I've been checking Mom, up on you. Mom, you haven't been around here too much. Why, why have you been around here so much? Because I like you. Well, Mom, I like you too. But liking doesn't have anything to do with it. Well, if I knew you felt so strongly about it, I wouldn't have brought the meatloaf. Mother, we are not talking about the meatloaf. Well, then what are we talking about? Where, Mom, will you stop crying? That isn't fair. I'm not crying. <laughs> Mom, we are talking about the phone call this morning. Now, if that's not checking up on me, then I don't know what is. What phone call? Oh, Mother, you know what phone call. <laughs> Who is it? Me. 
I went home thinking I might get some dinner. Oops, don't let me kill the fun. No, Dad! Please, Dad, stay. Mother, are you telling me that you didn't call me this morning and then hang up when I answered? Hang up? Why would I call you and then hang up? Well, then if you didn't call, who did? I did. You, you did? That's right. I got home from my AMA meeting at 11 o'clock, a respectable hour, expecting to find my wife there. And when she wasn't, I called here and my daughter wasn't home either. Well, Miss Nightlife here finally showed up at 12.30. But by then I was so used to calling you, I just kept it up until 8.27 this morning. You got home at 8.27 this morning? <laughs> More or less, yes, Dad. As long as you were on the phone, why, why didn't you just say hi? Because I didn't want you to think I was checking up on you. <laughs> I figured since you were well enough to answer the phone, everything was okay. I shouldn't have hung up. Uh, I certainly agree with you there. What I should have done was ask you where the hell you were until 827. <laughs> Dad, look, I am over 30 years old. I don't have to answer that. I don't care how old you are. You're still my daughter, and I've still got the right to worry about you. Okay, okay, look, when you lived in Roseburg, you didn't know where I was half the time. It didn't bother you then. Oh, yes, it did. Well, plenty of times I, I started to pick up the phone, but I didn't. D well, why, why didn't you? Well, I... Long distance. <laughs> well, as long as you're both here, you want to have dinner? What do you say, Daddy? Well, as long as we're not in the way. Oh, we're not in the way. <laughs> we'll have a um, meatloaf and um, sloppy uh, pizza. <laughs> Fortunately, I made enough meatloaf for the three of us. <laughs> I'll just go warm it up. You know, you still haven't told us what you did last night. I know. You're not going to tell us. Oh, Dottie, I guess we'll just have to get used to that. You're right. We'll just have to get used to that. <laughs> we'll never get used to that. Twice the power is a lot of power. It's like having twice as many plumbers on the job. Professional plumbers on professional strength liquid plumber. The key is to get more power to the clog. Yeah, all the other liquid drain openers dilute. They wimp out. This stuff doesn't. It's more powerful. It cuts through water like a torpedo. So twice as much power attacks the hair clog and pow. Goodbye, clog. Imagine if we were twice as powerful. <laughs> yeah, we'd have to raise our rates. <laughs> get twice the power to the clog. Get professional strength liquid plumber in the gray bottle. Once upon a time, there was a small child, a big grandpa, and a golden sound storybook. The grandpa read, And then Bugs Bunny said, The child touched, yeah, What's up, Doc? And they both laughed. There was so much to see and hear, they spent the whole day together, and the whole night, too. Golden Sound Storybooks, your child's favorite stories, brought to life. Nick at Night is committed to preserving our television heritage. That means being committed to preserving the peace, committed to defending the environment, to recognizing those who are different, committed to maintaining the fabric of world unity, to respecting a woman's independence, to having the neighbors over, committed to television and its quest to better our world. The world would be a lot better if everybody was committed. Nick at Night, committed to preserving our television heritage for you, the TV generation. That's the first visit by an American Secretary of Agriculture to Miami Beach. Who timed this show? We're going to end up about a minute short. Give me something quick. I don't want him staring at the camera with a silly look on his face. Phil discussions to throw his head in the ring. How can you tell when a man with a silly look on his face gets a silly look on his face? Well, that's the news for tonight. This is Ted Baxter saying, see you tomorrow.
of Winnebago had a surprise yesterday when he harvested his crop and found an 11-pound turnip. <laughs> Repeating that bulletin. Nick, Nick, Nick at night is, Nick at night is better than... The traffic jam. Your Uncle Sam. You lost your gal. Uh, Root canal. A mirror broke. A mighty poke. Oh. It's Nick at night or right at night. It's Nick at night at night or right. It's Nick at night or right at night. This portion of Nick at Night is brought to you by Salon Selectives by Helene Curtis. There's going to be a big cultural explosion in America, and I want to be a part of it. Join the crusade to preserve our television heritage by watching The Lucy Show every weeknight on Nick at Night. Today, you have the most personalized choices ever to feel your most beautiful. From Salon Selectives comes two styling lines, the moisturizing and the bodifying. Choose moisturizing styling products to replenish, bodifying products to add volume. With greater personalization, you'll feel like you just stepped out of a salon. Choose to be your most beautiful. Free, fruit in the bottom, active yogurt cultures, not one ounce of fat. That's why Mary Hamilton does it every day. Smooth, creamy yogurt. Do it for you. Studios got something new. It's a hairspray breakthrough. New Mighty Mist hairspray. It's the latest news. It's micro diffusing. That's a mist that's so fine. It's even all over every time. It's micro diffused. Get the light. Touch. On election night, Nick at Night brings you eight episodes filled with slogans, speeches, and mudslinging. Democracy in action. It's election night on Nick at Night, Tuesday night at 8, 7 central. I did not. Okay, say you're a countertop and you find yourself with this blueberry stain. Now, you know there are some kinds of powders that are harsh and can scratch. So, would you want to be cleaned by one of them? Or, would you go for the soft scrub with Clorox bleach, which lifts out tough stains without harsh scratching? So, what's it going to be? A harsh powder or soft scrub with Clorox bleach? Ooh, wise choice. Soft scrub with bleach. Preferred by countertops everywhere. Now, maybe I'm biased, but Larry Storch watches Nick at Night for one reason. My favorite show, Donna Reed. Guys who play agar and watch Nick at Night, shouldn't you? Nick at Night gives us Patty Duke asking the musical question. Tell me, Mama, what to do if a boy makes eyes at you. Tell me, Mama, what to say when he looks at me that way. Should I let him hold my hand? Figure it out. Patty Duke, every night on Nick at Night. Make way for Guinea Pig Lane. Guinea Pig Lane? Sounds like a quaint old English street. That's what everybody in school's calling me. You know that substitute teacher we have in American history, Miss McIntosh? Yes. Well, she finally got to me. She kept yakking about how spoiled kids are today and how tough the pioneer kids had to be in the old days. And I said I wouldn't have minded living in those days. And she said I wouldn't have lasted a week. And I said it would have been a ball. And I told her I could go for a whole week without using any of the modern civilized conveniences. And she said I couldn't. I'm on her side. But the whole school is talking about it. You mean you're supposed to live like a pioneer for a week? 
If they did it, I can do it. Times have changed, Patty. Or maybe times have changed, but kids haven't. I don't believe we're weaklings, and I'm going to prove it. I've got to uphold the honor of my generation. Boy, is your generation in trouble. <laughs> I'm to think of it, so's mine. <laughs> when do you start? I've already started. <coughs> Hello? Hi, Rich. Listen, Rich, this is very important. Do you remember last week when we went downtown to get those things for school? Yeah. What? I think you'd better hang up. Why? Because the telephone hasn't been invented yet. Oh. <laughs> Lip post everywhere, from Zanzibar to Berkeley Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair! But they're cousins, identical cousins all the way. One pair of matching bookends, different as night and day. Where Kathy adores a minuet, the ballet russe. And crepe Suzette. Our Patty loves to rock and roll. A hot dog makes her lose control. What a wild duet. Still their cousins. Identical cousins and you find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind. When cousins are two of a kind. what you're letting yourself in for? Pablo, I've got to prove that kids today aren't soft. Except in the head. Can't we put him up for adoption? Who'd have me? You've got a point. Patty, aren't you going to use any modern conveniences at all? If it wasn't invented by 1800, forget it. And you've agreed to do this for a whole week? That's right. I'm out to prove that Miss McIntosh is wrong. Look, if I should slip up now and then, I, I want all of you to remind me. Oh, we'll remind you. Okay. Oh, I forgot to tell you the big news. Coach Edwards has practically picked me to be cheerleader captain at the big track meet next Saturday. Every girl in school was after it. Congratulations. Well, I better get dressed. Richard is taking me to a dance tonight. Uh, they had dancing back in 1800. I checked. Patty? Yeah? Are you going to bathe before you dress? Of course. They did take baths in those days. <laughs> Not with hot running water, they didn't. Mm. Oh, boy. Oh, I never knew water could be so heavy. No wonder they only took baths on Saturday nights. How does she get herself into these crazy situations? I don't think it's so crazy, Ross. I'm on Patty's side. I like what she's trying to prove. You know what I think? I think she's going to set us back a hundred years. <laughs>
are you doing? Putting you back in the 19th century. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I'm going to dry my hair. Why don't you rub two sticks together and start a fire? That's what the pioneers did. <laughs> yeah? Well, they should have used hair dryers. At least they wouldn't have gotten scalped that way. <laughs> I'd better get dressed. Richard's picking me up in a... What happened to the lights? Thomas Edison hasn't invented them yet, so I turned them off. <laughs> oh! Oh, boy. Here. Here what? Am I supposed to get dressed by that? Your, your great-great-grandmother did. Oh, yeah, but have you ever seen pictures of how she looked? <laughs> Me and my big mouth. Oh, that's an interesting hat. I couldn't get my hair done. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, there's my lord and master. You know, that Bella Lugosi is the greatest. Hi, Rich. Never mind the hi, Rich. You know you hung up on me this afternoon? Yeah, sorry about that. I can't talk on the telephone for a whole week. You can't? Why not? It hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> what? Look, it's a long story. Come on in and say hello to the old folks at home. It hasn't been invented yet? Now, wait a minute. Oh, hello, Mrs. Lane. Mr. Lane? Hello, Richard. Richard. Well... Let's go. He has all the social graces, hasn't he? Patty, Tootie Henderson's band starts playing at 8 o'clock. I don't want to miss any of it. We'll have just enough time to make the first number. Where is that dance, Richard? Over at Danceland. It's about three miles from here, isn't it? Yeah, but I've got my car outside. Oh. <laughs> I've forgot. You forgot what? Automobiles. I'm afraid your car's gonna have to stay right where it is, Richard. How are we gonna get to the dance? Walk? <laughs> <laughs> he asked you a question, dear. Yeah. Richard, my boy, hasn't it occurred to you that people don't get enough exercise these days? Sure. That's why we're going dancing. Mom. Would you mind walking? Walking three miles to a dance? Is it because you don't want her to ride with me? My driving's improved a lot, Mrs. Lane. I haven't had an accident since Monday, and it was nothing. <laughs> I mean, I got a scratch running board, but it wasn't my fault. Your car has a running board? <laughs> what are you driving, Richard? An Essex. In Essex. If you're worried, I can spring for a taxi cab. Richard, Patty can't ride in any vehicle this week. Except a covered wagon. A what? <laughs> you mean like an automobile hasn't even been invented yet or something? Uh, now, wait a minute. First the telephone. Come on, Richard. I'll explain on the way. Say goodnight to the nice people. Patty, if you think I'm going to walk three miles to the dance. are you. A lazy one. <laughs> you want to come in, Rich? This has been one of the most interesting evenings of my whole life. I'm sorry about the way things turned out, Rich. I didn't mind walking three miles to dance land. But the ten miles back... Uh, Patty, why do we have to leave when we got there? I told you because they were using microphones and... And the... pioneers didn't have microphones. Yeah. Now you want me to do this right, don't you? Sure. But without me... I'll see you next week when you come out of orbit and return to our time zone. You know, sometimes I think you really are an escaped Martian. Sorry, Rich. Oh, forget it. And I mean forget it. Rich. Good night. Good night. <laughs> and watch out for the wild Indians. <laughs> Is that you, Patty? Hi, Mamo. Papa. How are you, Aunt? Hmm. How was the dance? How do you spell fiasco? Hey, that's a pretty good word. Uh, please, no coaching unless it's my turn. Sorry about that. 
You know, I never should have dragged Richard into this. He's not up to it. Are you? If the pioneers could do it all their lives, I guess I can do it for one week. Oh, they must have been made of steel. Well, they were pretty rugged, but then they had to be. You know, it's amazing what you can do if you have to. Yeah, I hope you're right, Papa. I'd hate to let the kids school down. They're all counting on me. You won't let them down. I think you're doing just fine. Yeah. Since I'm starving to death. Oh, well, didn't you stop at the shake shop? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we stopped. Only I couldn't eat anything. They cooked their hamburgers on electric grills. And the pioneers never heard of a chocolate milkshake. Oh. You know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to fix you a great big pioneer sandwich, handmade, and a big glass of milk. Cow made. Thanks, Papa. Boy, they sure were losers, our ancestors. They didn't have anything. I'll tell you one thing they had. A wonderful, great, great, great granddaughter. One of us in this room is the murderer. And I'll tell you who it is. It's... to the movies with us, Patty? Yeah, so am I. I've been dying to see the monster with three heads. We'll tell you all about it. Oh, you don't have to. It's my autobiography. Good night. Good night. Hi, Kathy. Pioneer lady, you sure you don't want to go skating? I bet they ice skated. In the middle of a heat wave? Okay, see ya. Have fun. If you're going ice skating, put on a heavier sweater. I've got one on a rig. We're leaving, darling. You sure you don't want to go to that uh, jazz concert with us? I'd love to. But it'd be cheating. I don't think the pioneers went to jazz concerts. You know, we're really proud of the way you're sticking to this, honey. Oh, well, there's nothing to it. You know, a lot of kids would get bitter about having to take icy baths and walk everywhere and not watch television or use electric lights or telephones or go to movies or jazz concerts. A lot of kids. But not you. No. That's wonderful, darling. We'll be back early. Two hundred fifty million people in this country. Two hundred fifty million different ideas of what it is to be an American. What makes us one? What keeps us together? What puts the United in the United States? It's television, our shared television heritage. And who protects and preserves that precious heritage? Nick at Night, affirming our common bond with the shows that mattered then, that matter today, and will matter tomorrow. Nick at Night is preserving our precious television heritage. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. They were the hard-riding men of the cattle drives, blazing the trail of action throughout the Old West. Now you can join them with Rawhide, the collector's edition, available for only $4.95 exclusively from Columbia House Video. Round up your first two-hour, two-episode volume. Saddle up with the legendary TV western that introduced the world to Clint Eastwood. I'm warning you, boy. Don't make me count to three. Rawhide, the heroic story of a brave band of riders led by Gil Favor, trail boss, and his trusted ramrod, Rowdy Yates. If you try to take him, you'll have more war than you can handle. Ready for anything. 
rustlers, renegades, storms, and stampedes. You never know what's waiting for you on the Rawhide Trail. To order, just call this toll-free number and enjoy complete uncut excitement. To get your first two-hour, two-episode video, call this toll-free number. Credit card orders only, please. been carrying on like that all evening. Hmm. The big Who track meet is Saturday. What just you mean done? we have to listen to that until Saturday? Hey, we're on fire! <laughs> <laughs> what about that one? Noisy. Papa Yells are supposed to be noisy. It's up to me to give inspiration to the team. Being captain of the cheerleaders is a very big responsibility. Are you definitely captain? Well, practically definitely. It's between me and Alice, and uh, actually, she doesn't have a chance, poor kid. She has a voice somewhere between Ema Sumac and Louis Armstrong. <laughs> Watch our team on the beam. Shake them, break them, show them how you take them. Rah! Brooklyn! <whistles> that definitely should inspire the old team. Martin, uh, what do you think? <laughs> Patty, how is uh, Project Pioneer coming along? Oh, that. <sighs> Great. I only have a few more days to go. You know, it's been fun. In a gruesome sort of way. I gotta go. Richard and I are going for a walk in the park. Oh, come home! Hey, you take care of that. She's lucky it's not the hunting season. <laughs> What do you have, Cappy? Oh, uh, Sammy, I think I'll have a cheeseburger and a chocolate milkshake. I'll have a peanut butter on date and nut bread and a banana split. I'll have a sink. Oh, I'll have a cheeseburger, a chocolate milkshake, peanut butter and date and nut bread, and a banana split. Another year with you, Richard, and we can all retire. What do you have, Patty? Glass of water, no ice. How long are you going to keep this up, Patty? Until I drop dead or Monday, whichever comes first. Well, I certainly admire you. Oh, you can afford to. You're eating a peanut butter sandwich on date nut bread and a banana split. They did eat in 1800, you know. Yeah, but the peanut butter didn't come in jars and the bread wasn't baked by machines. I can't talk about it. I get all choked up. Hi, Kathy. Hello, Alice. Patty. Hi, Alice. Hi, Richard. Uh, hi, Alice. Hi, Maggie. Hi. What are you having? Order something gooey. I enjoy hearing. Oh, I'm too excited to eat. Why? What happened? Oh, guess who's the new captain of the cheerleaders at the track meet next Saturday? I don't have to guess. I am. Oh, not anymore, you're not. Coach Edwards just made me captain. He couldn't have. He practically promised it to me. Oh, did he? A little bird must have told him that you're living in the dark ages and didn't have a way to the track meet Saturday. That wasn't a little bird. That was a little rat. <laughs> Waiter, some cheese for my little friend here. You... Yes, Patty, but oh, I... Oh, you just can't let Alice be captain. I know all the yells. Yes, Patty, And but... I was captain last year. Yes, Patty, but... All the kids are counting on me. Yes, Patty, but... Aren't you going to interrupt me? Yes, Go on, sir. Well, It's just not fair. I... It just isn't fair. I should have stayed with yes, Patty, but... I'm sorry. But just uh, give me one good reason why. Patty, why? When I, uh, I, I, I was captain last year and... Now, I understand that you've entered into a bargain with Miss McIntosh, your history teacher. Is that right? Yes, sir. But that didn't include not being captain of the cheerleader. But you agreed not to use any mode of transportation not in use by 1800, right? Yes, sir. But... Patty, do you know how far it is from Brooklyn Heights High to the stadium where that track meet is being held? Not exactly. Well, I'll tell you exactly. It is 22 miles. Is that all? No, that is not all. If you're returning, it's 44 miles. I thought it was more than that. Now, when does your agreement with Miss McIntosh end? Uh, this Monday. 
Now, the track meet is this Saturday. You're going to have to make a choice, Patty. Do you want to get out of this thing with Miss McIntosh? No, sir. I've suffered this long. I'm going to finish it. Well, then you can see my problem. Obviously, you can't be to that track before noon on Saturday unless you use a, a, a bus or a car or a train. Coach Edwards? Huh? If I'm on that field by 12 noon Saturday, will you let me be captain of the cheerleaders? Patty, if you can keep your bargain with Miss McIntosh and still be at that field at noon on Saturday, you can have my job. <laughs> that won't be necessary, but thanks. See you on the field Saturday. Yeah, I... Saturday! You know, I was thinking, Saturdays don't come around that often. Why don't we all take a drive up into the country today? Oh, I'm sure Patty can't go with us. In the first place, she's not riding in anything this week, and in the second place, today is the day of the big track meet. Oh, I forgot. She's captain of the yelling team. They call it cheerleaders. They can call it what they want, and I'll call it what I want. There's no problem. Patty isn't going to be the captain. I thought Coach Edwards said she could be. Only if she got out there by noon. Kathy told me the field is 22 miles away. 22 miles away? Where is Patty? Upstairs asleep. It's after 9 o'clock. She couldn't make it out there now unless she ran all the way. Oh, hi, Kath. Good morning, Uncle Martin. Aunt Natalie. Frost. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Kathy. When I got up this morning, I found this on Patty's bed. It says, please don't worry about me. Henry is taking me to the track meet. We'll be back late. It's signed, Captain of the Cheerleaders, almost. When did she leave? I don't know. When I woke up, she was gone. I've been up for hours, and I didn't see her. Martin, she must have left in the middle of the night. You don't think that she'd be crazy enough to try to walk that 22 miles out to the field? And 22 miles back? That's 44 miles. That's impossible. Well, of course, it's been an impossible week. You know, frankly, I never thought she'd stick to that agreement she made, but she did. Well, I suppose if she could go back 165 years, she can walk 44 miles. 44 miles? Oh, Martin, she'll be dead when she gets home. You know, maybe I'll take a little drive out there. Well, you know, in, in case she'd like a lift back. Well, I mean, 44 miles. If I know Patty, Uncle Martin, she's not going to want to lift back. Yeah, she's stubborn. She'll crawl first. I don't know how the rest of you feel about this whole idiotic thing, but I'm so proud of her, I could just burst. You know, if she wasn't my daughter, I'd write an editorial about her. Maybe I will anyway. <laughs> Why don't we have a surprise for her when she gets back? What kind of surprise? Oh, I don't know, a victory celebration? See, that's a wonderful idea. I'll barbecue some steaks. I'll bake some bread. I'll put up some lanterns. I'll get a pan of hot water so she can soak her feet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the best suggestion yet, Ross. She's going to be in terrible shape when she gets back here. See, I have a wonderful idea. Why don't we set up a couch on the patio, and, and then she can lie down and eat her dinner? <laughs> hey, Dad, what time's Patty going to get here? What? I said, what time is Patty going to get here? I figure I wouldn't put the hot water into it until she got here. Oh, I think it's a good idea. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not going to start that fire for a couple of hours yet. So I figure uh, she's going to walk around three and a half, four miles an hour, maybe five, 22 miles. Uh, she's got to rest a little on the way. Uh, or she'll be here between 9 o'clock and uh, 4 o'clock in the morning. You should have been there, Papa. We won everything. The 100-yard dash, the 50-yard dash, the broad jumps, the hurdles, everything. Oh, boy, I wish you were there. Even you, Ross. Honey, you just came from the track meet? Yeah, it was a clean sweep. You mean you walked all the way out there and... Walked? No, I never could have made it in time. Henry gave me a lift out and brought me back. That's exactly what I would have done, Patty. Yeah, me too, sis. Well, actually, it was very wise of you, dear. Yeah, there's nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, I guess it was a kind of a silly agreement anyway. I don't understand what you're all talking about. Oh, about your giving up your Pioneer Week agreement with Miss McIntosh. Well, if Henry gave you a lift out, I think maybe you all better meet Henry.
If you're looking for a new career opportunity, listen to this. There's never been a better time to be an electronics repair technician like me. We're really in demand, and you could be too. The National Education Center is now offering a course to train you as an electronics repair technician. Call now for a copy of this brochure. This could be your chance of a lifetime. For a brochure on career training in the electronics field, call 1-800-654-2100. That's 1-800-654-2100. Call now. At last, you can love oatmeal. Because today, oatmeal is oatmeal raisin crisp. Oatmeal raisin crisp. This is good! Look, Ma, I'm eating my oatmeal. Look, Ma! Hello, darling. Oh, Sounds like Patty's having a little party. <laughs> I don't blame her. She's entitled to her victory celebration. Oh, I bought her a present. She can keep this as a reminder of Pioneer Week. <laughs> oh, I don't think she'll ever forget Pioneer Week. I know I won't. What's going on? Must be an overload in the neighborhood. Or even closer. your toothbrush every three months. So does the new Oral-B indicator. When the blue band fades halfway, it's time for a new brush. The new indicator from Oral-B. The brand more dentists use. Hey, watch out! Oh, no! Uh-oh! Are nicks and scratches destroying your car's finish? Introducing Color Smart, the color-coordinated polish that makes nicks and scratches disappear. Look, to shine your shoes, you choose matching color polish. Color Smart works the same way. Just choose the color that matches your car. Not a car key. Use Color Smart White, and those scratches disappear. Color Smart brings back any car's shine. Amazing. Don't spend hundreds on a new paint job. Now you can order Color Smart, the paint job in a bottle, for only $19.95. Order now, and we'll double the size of your bottle. An incredible. 16 ounces. But wait, call within the next 10 minutes and we'll also include this triple bonus. Restore it, clear glass, and new car scent. A $20 value free. Order your Color Smart today. Have your credit card ready and call 1 800 441 5900 or send check or money order to the address on your screen. For faster delivery, call 1 800 441 5900. The National Weather Service gives hurricanes stupid names. What does Nick at Night want? Hurricane named Superman, if you ask me. Nick at Night demands a hurricane named Superman. Here's Kathy, who's lived most everywhere, from Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair! But they're cousins, identical cousins, and you'll find they laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. I'm Sally Sperling, president of Hair Club for Men. If you have thinning hair, then this new booklet is something you should have. If you call our toll-free number, we'll send you our new brochure, which contains information about various hair replacement methods, including what the FDA has to say about the drug minoxidil. Of course, you'll also learn about Hair Club's new non-surgical polyfuse method. Whether wet right out of the shower or blown dry before going out, it looks and feels natural, just like a part of you. Hair Club's new polyfuse method literally fuses top quality human hair to your own hair. Even when you feel it, feel around the perimeter of your head, I mean, you really cannot feel anything in your hair. It really gave me more ways to be able to do my hair and I could do it in more of a 90s fashion. A new healthy head of hair can renew confidence and improve self-esteem. It may also bring out the best of who you are. So make sure you call our toll-free number to receive our new brochure. 
It's loaded with information so you can make the right choice for yourself. And by the way, I'm not only the HECO president, but I'm also a client. Joe Friday, ultra cool, ultra mod. Sure. It's Dragnet, baby, every night on Nick at Night. We really should wait for Tony, sir. He should be here any minute. Major Nelson has exactly three minutes. If he isn't here, we'll start the procedures without him. Yes, sir. Couldn't we delay it a little while, Doctor? Two minutes, Major Healy. Yeah, the doctor. Sleep. I, I told you I, we were going to have a dry run of a space shot today. Well, I woke on time, but I, I dreamed that we were married, and I could not resist going back for the honeymoon. <laughs> Get me to the basement, please. Now? Yes, now. Oh, very well. Tony, <laughs> be late, sir. Major, we're going to start. <laughs> Dr. Bellows. <laughs> Uh, would you like some breakfast, sir? seconds, you will lose half a million skin cells. Skin Science Update from Vaseline Intensive Care. I'm Joan London. A hostile environment can make skin dry, flaky, but Vaseline Intensive Care Research developed a lotion with three proven ingredients that helps rebuild the skin's outer layers, helps heal even chronic dryness. There's no better lotion to protect the 28 billion skin cells you have left. Vaseline Intensive Care Lotion. From Intensive Research comes Intensive Care. I met him on Saturday. He is so cute. <laughs> I, I've never felt like this before. He has the most amazing eyes. When he smiles at me, I can just tell that we need each other. He gets so... Emily is a volunteer helping babies with AIDS. To learn what else you can do in your community, call the Points of Light Foundation. Do something good. Feel something real. Television, this is what it means. Fulfillment of all your wildest dreams. What you get from a fear in TV land. It's good TV, you understand. Nick at night. Five, four, three, two, the home fan. This is Capcom Control, signing off. Yeah, perfect. Hi, Tony. Right. Hello, Major. Take him down. Oh, hello, Doctor. Now, how'd it go at your end? An unqualified success, Major Nelson. Your protege is green for go for the real thing tomorrow. I'm certain Sam appreciates your contribution. Well, I didn't join the uh, astronaut program to become a radio announcer, sir. I was kind of hoping a NASA would put me in the driver's seat. Well, I'm with Tony. We're the senior astronauts on this project, and I guess who gets to make the first shot? Sam, I mean, it isn't fair. Now, don't be bitter, gentlemen. If you really want the first crack of this mission, why, you <laughs> you should have been more selective in choosing your parents. It's all a matter of heredity. <laughs> well done, Sam. <laughs> all right, uh, Sam, press the green. 
Hey. Good boy. Good boy. There's something wrong with this. I'm going to check it. I'm going to have to get a technician to take a look at this panel. <coughs> Hurry up, will you, Tony? Everybody else has gone for lunch. Master! Jeannie! Oh, thank heaven. Oh, for a minute, I thought that... Oh. What are you doing here? I told you never to come to NASA. Never. Oh, but it is important, Master. You said I could come if it was an emergency. Well, what happened? What's the matter? What happened? I got lonely. You got lonely? You got lonely? <coughs> Why do we not go to a movie this afternoon? Because Roger and I have a lot of work to do. Now, get out of here, and I mean it. Right now. Hey, look what Sam's doing. Uh, oh, uh, Sam, Sam, please. Now, now, don't touch any of the buttons until I give you the orders, huh? Red for red and green for green. Okay, don't worry. You'll be all right when the time comes. Yeah, but what good is it? He can't make any decisions. We might as well have a robot up there. <laughs> I will buy lunch. I know a wonderful little restaurant along the banks of the Nile. Really? Well, I've starved. I haven't eaten. We've but... got work to do. Lots of work to do. <laughs> Major Nelson, how are you? Doctor? Uh, Inshallah, Afendi. Uh, who is that? The water boy. <laughs> Come along, Sam. We have a lot of work to do. <laughs> Was that not brilliant, Master? <laughs> he did not suspect a thing. <laughs> no, he probably just thought you were one of the regular run-of-the-mill NASA Arabs. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Jeannie. No lunch? No lunch. Yeah, Dr. Bellis is expecting too much out of this. What do you mean? Well, even if Sam does his job properly, we're going to get limited information. What Orbiter 5 needs up there is a man. Well, let's stop dreaming and get back to work. We don't have a man. We've got a monkey. Master. Jeannie, please. Where shall I go? Where does any woman go? Spend the day at the beauty parlor. Very well, Master. Jeannie. Mm, yes, Master? Please. <laughs> Goodbye, Master. <laughs> You've done very well this morning, Sam. Here's a reward for you. Now, Sam, the next test we're going to... Sam. Sam! Look, I, I, that wiring's loose. I think we better get an electrician in here. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we ought to fool around. Hold on, I got an idea. Give me, give me a screwdriver, will you? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Hi. Oh, hi. That yeah, was fast. Um, there's something wrong with the signal switch. Would you take a look at it, please? Sure. Wherever you are, here's a nice banana for you. Now, you've got to be in this room somewhere. Yeah, and you're around here, aren't you? Where, where, where are you from? The Cameroons, Equatorial West Africa. That's where I was born and raised as a kid. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. And then my, my whole family got captured. Captured? <laughs> Wiring. Sam is irreplaceable. You are not. I want you to find that chimp. Oh, I will, General, I will. And I think I know just where to look. I said to myself, if I were a chimpanzee, where would I go? And what did you decide? I'd go to where Major Nelson is. Major Nelson? Yes, sir. My theory is that Sam has gone in search of his mother substitute. And Tony Nelson is Sam's mother substitute? That's right, General. After all, Major Nelson has worked very closely with Sam. Sam's animal instincts told him that he was being placed in jeopardy. And he felt an overwhelming need for the warmth and comfort of the maternal bosom. How does that sound to you, sir? Sounds to me as though you've been seeing too many jungle pictures. <laughs> Find Sam. Uh, is that going to take you long? Uh... Sam! Sam, you wouldn't like another electrician to help you, would you? I'm no electrician. 
I'm a scientist. A scientist, huh? Yeah. It's a beautiful success story. I'm the first scientist in our family. One of my brothers made it big in show business. Maybe you saw him on the Jerry Lewis show. Mm, no, I, I don't think I caught it. Uh, you're going to you're gonna be able to uh, put that back together, aren't you? That will you excuse me, please? Hello, Major Nelson here. Oh, hello, Dr. Bellows. Huh? Just... You, you, uh, you think Sam's escaped? You think he's on his way over here? Well, why? A uh, mother what? Oh, oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Of course, we'll keep our eyes open for him. Right, sir. Yeah. Hey, uh, Dr. Bellis is on his way over here. He thinks Sam is coming. Don't let him get me. I want to stay here with you. Wait, wait, wait. Will you get off, huh? I don't want to go back in a cage. Get off. You? Nobody's going to put you back in a cage. What's the matter with you, Sam? Sam. That's Sam. I know it's Sam. Sam, it can't be Sam. <laughs> As yes, it can be. Jeannie. Jeannie! Why would Jeannie do a thing like that? Why does she do anything? Jeannie! Don't let him take me. He treated me like a monkey. <laughs> but Sam, you are a monkey. <laughs> Who are you calling a monkey? Uh, Sam, I'm sorry about this, but you're just going to have to become a chimpanzee again. You want to be a chimpanzee? Be a chimpanzee. I'm staying a man. Uh, Sam, this whole thing is a mistake. Uh, 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 you see, a friend of mine, I have this... Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can I help you? Oh, I hope so. My master sent me. Uh, well, what exactly can we do for you? Well, I, I, I am not sure. I've never been to a beauty parlor before. You've never? <laughs> Just one minute. I'll get Mr. Sidney, okay? <laughs> Good afternoon. Oh, yeah. I understand you've never been in a beauty salon before. That is right. What would you like? Oh, what do you have? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Get ready for one super deluxe. <laughs> right this way, please. Sam, now, now, try to... <laughs> What I've been trying to say is that, uh, according to Darwin, it's going to be several thousand years before you reach our level of development. Uh -oh. <laughs> Sam, you'd be, you'd be much happier as a chimp. Oh, yeah? Have you ever seen a chimp driving around in a convertible with a blonde? <laughs> I've got a mate you wouldn't believe. Big, hairy. <laughs> He's coming. I smell. You smell who? Hey, wait a minute. Don't go up there. Look, look. This is all classic. Don't go up there. Any sign of Sam? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, no, nothing to talk, talk about. Nothing sir. to talk about, sir. Well, I have a general alarm out, and I've had the base sealed up. Oh, he won't get away. After all, how far can a chimpanzee get before someone sees him? Yeah, well, I, I think I can uh, guarantee he'll be up in that capsule tomorrow. Yeah, he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> well, Sam, we know that, Major. That's why I put out a general alarm. You'd better pull yourself together. Yes. You have a lovely complexion. It's hard to believe you've never been in a beauty salon. Well, I used to go to the Roman baths a lot. The Roman baths? Yes, Nero's wife and I used to go every Saturday morning before the chariot races. <laughs> oh, oh, I hope my master likes the way I look. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he will. There we go. Oh, this is a beauty parlor. Sam? Oh, Sam. Sam? Sam! What are we going to do, Tony? I'm afraid he's gotten away. Oh, how could he have gotten away? There's, there's nowhere to go. There's guards all over the place. Yeah. 
I know. We'll use psychology. Think like a chimp, huh? No, I'm serious now. If you were a chimpanzee and you, and you wanted to hide, where would you go? Well, I don't know. The first place I'd go is up a tree. <laughs> The worst pain I get is in my back. Stop chronic back pain in five seconds. I had headaches that last from 24 to 36 hours. Stop a headache in 60 seconds. All of a sudden it comes on and you go ow, 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 and you rub your leg. and Stop leg pain in 30 seconds. When I get this, this pain in my knee, it can last anywhere from two to three hours. When you're in pain, it seems to take forever to get that pain to go away. That's why we asked over 500 doctors to tell us the absolute fastest ways to stop pain and heal everything from cold to allergies, fatigue, and even stress. All their answers are right here in High Speed Healing from the editors of Prevention Magazine Health Books. I'm Bill Gottlieb, Editor-in-Chief. Now you can learn how to relieve an asthma attack in 10 seconds, stop bleeding in three minutes, unstuff a stuffy nose in five seconds or less all in high-speed healing. Over 550 pages, more than 1,500 of the fastest, most effective remedies for lasting relief. Doctor-approved shortcuts that will help you feel better in no time flat. Call now for high-speed healing. Try it absolutely free for 21 days. That's three full weeks to learn how fast these quick remedies can help you. Then if you choose to keep it, pay just three easy installments of $9.99. And as a free gift, you'll get Prevention's Guide to Symptoms, almost 50 pages of easy-to-understand information that tells you what symptoms mean, what you can do about them, and when to see a doctor. Remember, you can try high-speed healing free for 21 days, and the free Guide to Symptoms is yours to keep. So call now. When I get a toothache, the pain feels like it's going to last forever. It just throbs and throbs. Stop a toothache in 7 minutes. Sore throat pain in 30 seconds. Call 1-800-354-3800, 1-800-354-3800. Need a fact? Need it fast? Then turn to Nick at Night's TV Land Almanac, the subject shortest TV series. When it comes to short-lived TV series, nothing comes close to the undersea world of Gomer Pyle. The 1971 show, slated to be a year-long series, ended after only 16 minutes when Gomer finally found his car keys. For more facts, keep watching Nick at Night. Now, now, come on down, Sam. Nobody's gonna hurt you. I'm staying here till that missile goes up. <laughs> How would you like a nice banana? Uh, or some peanuts. I'll get you a big bag of peanuts. What do you say? Dr. Nelson. Yes. yes. Would you mind telling me what you're doing? Uh, well, I was uh, speaking to the gardener, sir. Uh, he's pruning the trees. Well, I suggest that you get on with your search for Sam. Uh, that's what I was doing, sir. I thought perhaps the, the gardener had seen him. Have you? <laughs> Simple yes or no would have been sufficient. But these days is impossible. Now what? I mean, even if we get him down out of that tree, how are we going to turn him back into a chimpanzee again? Yeah. <laughs> Quiet. Genie. Genie what? Genie will change him back. That's the answer. Would you? <laughs> Genie isn't here. But she will be. Whenever I'm in trouble, I just concentrate on her and she comes to me. Now I gotta concentrate. Uh -huh. Genie. Genie. Would you like some coffee? I cannot hear you. Would you like some coffee? Oh, yes, I would. <laughs> Yeah, it's no use, Raj. You mean your friend's not going to change me back again? Yeah, that's right. Come on, let's go. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey! Wait for me! Do you hear something? No. I thought I heard someone calling my name. May I use your phone? Yes, there's one in the other room. I'll oh, get it. Please, not bother. <laughs> the first thing.
thing I'm going to do is move in with you. I'm a lot of laughs once you get to know me. I will really be swinging. To the end of a noose. What? Huh? Sam, you wouldn't want to hold up this space program, would you? Huh? Who, me? I'm all ready to go up. All you have to do is call Dr. Bellows and tell him who I am. He's got you there. Hey, what do you say we all go nightclub? Some place where they got a lot of swinging chicks. <laughs> That's probably Dr. Bellows. Give him my love. Hello, Major Nelson here. Hello, Master. Oh, hello, uh... Hello, Major. Major? <laughs> this is Jeannie, Master. Yes, I know. You know that package you changed for me? Package? <laughs> oh, you must mean Sam. I knew that would make you happy, Master. <laughs> well, happy's not really the word for it. Yeah, I'd like you to take it back. Oh, but I thought that... Yeah. Jeannie, I'd like you to take it back right now. If that is what you wish. Oh. Hello? I don't think we'll ever get this place back together again. What'd you say? Sam! Hey, Bill, you said Jeannie's turning them back again. Oh, you're not going to do any nightclubbing after all. You're going up in space tomorrow. <laughs> not if I can help it. <laughs> hey, on him it looks good. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Tony? Is that you, Tony? Don't worry about a thing. I'm going to sneak you out here. We've got no problem. Sam! Where? You found Sam. Oh, this found Sam? Oh, that's, uh, that's not Sam, sir. <laughs> then who is it? Who's that? Oh, that's, uh, that's Ernie. It's his cousin. He used to hang around at the zoo and... Uh, now, don't be ridiculous, Major Healy. There's only one chimpanzee around here. <laughs> Besides, I know Sam when I see him. Here we are. Come along, Sam. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't take Sam with you, sir. Then why not? Well, he's just a baby. Oh, Major Healy, Sam has been trained for this mission. Where's Major Nelson? I, I think he's at the end of his rope. Send it to me as soon as you find him. This mission is going up on schedule. Sir? <laughs> Genius. Genius. There. That looks truly elegant. No. Thank you very much, but I think I like it better the other way. There. Do you not think this is the... Yes, General Whiston, that's right. Sam is right here in my office. And he's in fine shape for his little trip into space. Oh, don't worry, sir. I intend to keep Sam here right with me every second until blast off. Thank you, General. That's very kind of you. Well, it was just a question of understanding animal psychology. <laughs> Yes, the animal mind is so different. Dr. Bellows, are you there? General Whiston, I've just discovered the missing link. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. I'll see you later, honey. I gotta visit a sick friend. <laughs> oh. How you doing, buddy boy? I know just how you feel. I'm up to here with them bananas myself. <laughs> hey, you know this evolution you was telling me about? I kind of like it. <laughs> Master! Master, I'm home! Jeannie! Oh, Major Healy. Where's Major Nelson? Where? You're asking me where Major Nelson is? He's a monkey. That's where he is. I do not understand. Yeah, well, you blink cockeyed and turned him into a chimpanzee. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait for me. Wait. Oh, wait. Wait. I helped you out, buddy boy. But I have this date tonight with a brunette. This is the life. I'm taking him up to our place for a drink. Good luck, Tony. 
Oh, hi. How's tricks? I will show you. Oh, Janie. Oh, Master, you are not angry with me? <laughs> angry with you? You're the most beautiful person I've ever seen. <laughs> You're the most beautiful person I've ever seen in my life. Where have you been? Well, I, I went to the beauty parlor where you sent me. Why did you not call me? <laughs> Why didn't I call you? <laughs> Uh, uh, excuse me, yes, uh, excuse me. Uh, I'm afraid you're not going to be able to keep that date tonight. You're not really dressed for it, you know. <laughs> Sam, you may not believe this, but I envy you. I really do. You're going to go up there and have a wonderful trip. We're going to get you down safely. Oh, boy. Oh. Roger, Roger, he's going to be going crazy. Roger, I got to find Roger. <laughs> You are in the bug. Good with <laughs> This is the most miraculous thing I've ever seen. Oh. Now, if this is a joke of general, kind, I'm telling you, I saw him write that with my own eyes. What? I'll go down in history. Ask him to write something. Yes, sir. Oh, Sam, uh, this is General Liston. He would uh, like to see you write something. Now, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. You really believe this? Oh, you'll see it for yourself, General. Now, here we are. The Gettysburg Address, written by a monkey. <laughs> You almost had it right, Doctor. It was dictated by a monkey. <laughs> Where did I go wrong? <laughs> got even better. A few channels became dozens. Well, here I am again with a chance. For Satellite technology wired us to the world with 24-hour movies, news, sports, and music. Hello, cable system. I'd like to order the fight, please. Innovations that will come together in 1992. To compliment NBC's network coverage. The Olympics triple cast. Three separate cable channels. In addition to the NBC network broadcast, commercial free, all the best events, 15 days, 24 hours a day, the Olympics triple cast, another cable triumph. President of Hair Club for Men, if you have thinning hair, then this new booklet is something you should have. If you call our toll-free number, we'll send you our new brochure, which contains information about various hair replacement methods, including what the FDA has to say about the drug minoxidil. Of course, you'll also learn about Hair Club's new non-surgical polyfuse method. Whether wet right out of the shower or blown dry before going out, it looks and feels natural, just like a part of you. Hair Club's new polyfuse method literally fuses top quality human hair to your own hair. Even when you feel it, feel around the perimeter of your head, I mean, you really cannot feel anything in your hair. It really gave me more ways to be able to do my hair and I could do it in more of a 90s fashion. A new healthy head of hair can renew confidence and improve self-esteem. It may also bring out the best of who you are. So make sure you call our toll-free number to receive our new brochure. It's loaded with information so you can make the right choice for yourself. And by the way, I'm not only the heck of president, but I'm also a client. I watched Nick at night for about 20 minutes one time, and then I had to leave. Wink watches Nick at night uh, until he has to leave, shouldn't you? This controls orbit five. Control to orbit five. Can you hear me, Sam? Good. You're doing fine. Just, just relax. I want you to press the green button, Sam. The green button on the panel board. You did it. I knew he could. All right, you're doing great. 
Now, Sam, I want you to press the red button. Yeah. Excellent. All right, now, Sam, you, you're just doing fine. I want you to press the red and the green button at the same time. Red and green, Sam. Green and red, Sam. Red and green? I you kidding? I've only got two hands, you know. Can you do this, do that? Do you know the trouble with you human beings? You're never satisfied. Why can't you make up your mind about what you If you need a taste of good TV, don't cook tonight. Watch Nick at night. Mmm, <laughs> good TV. Every night for the TV generation. How can you stop a throbbing toothache? Massage your hand with ice. How do you cure poison ivy? Try oatmeal. How do you quiet a colicky baby? Run the vacuum. How do I know these cures really work? because my staff and I spent months interviewing over 500 doctors and health professionals to bring you this incredible book, The Doctor's Book of Home Remedies from the editors of Prevention Magazine Health Books. I'm Bill Gottlieb, Editor-in-Chief, and after writing about health for over 14 years, I can assure you there has never been a more complete and practical encyclopedia of home healing techniques than The Doctor's Book of Home Remedies. Over 670 pages, 2,300 remedies. The wisdom and experience of over 500 top U.S. doctors and health experts covering over 130 different health problems. You'll learn how a steaming cup of coffee can stop an asthma attack, how plain yogurt soothes a sunburn. From controlling diabetes to ending diaper rash, you'll find it all in the Doctor's Book of Home Remedies. Call now for the Doctor's Book of Home Remedies. Try it absolutely free for 21 days. That's three full weeks to read and use this home encyclopedia of health and healing absolutely free. Then, if you choose to keep it, we'll bill you in three easy installments of only $8.98. And as a free gift, you'll also get this Meals That Heal cookbook, over 50 pages of recipes and recommendations on the foods and dishes that can help make you well and keep you healthy. Remember, you can try the Doctor's Book of Home Remedies free for 21 days. And the free Meals That Heal cookbook is yours to keep. So call now. In the meantime, use your blow dryer to soothe an earache. Try rubbing aspirin on a bee sting. To stop grinding your teeth, eat an... Call 1-800-826-5600, 1-800-826-5600. Naked Night brand reruns of Alfred Hitchcock Presents are not new and improved. Allow us to explain. They're originals. Originals that thrill. Originals that kill. Originals that spill. <laughs> Stories built to last by the master of suspense, shown in glorious black and white, with no interruptions and no... Baloney. So don't be fooled by imitations. Watch the original. Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Every night on Naked Night. This is the city, Los Angeles, California. This part of it has been here a long time, several thousand years. This is Hancock Park, the tar pits where more than one prehistoric skeleton has been unearthed. This sign, spelling out a world-famous name, was put up on the side of a mountain over 50 years ago. The sign, like the mountains, hasn't changed through the years. Some of the buildings are still standing, the old Hall of Records, but they're beginning to change. The new Hall of Records. Los Angeles is really a young city. 
This is where it all began, when it was a Mexican pueblo. They called this the plaza. Today, this is a plaza. It's a mall, a shopping center. In Los Angeles, you don't have to go downtown. Everything's right here. Stores, markets, restaurants, banks. These plazas are all over the city. And they all need protection. That's part of my job. I carry a badge. It was Tuesday, August 4th. It was hot in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of robbery division, bank detail. The boss is Captain Howe. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. 10.09 a.m., we got a Code 3 call. Five minutes after the Mercantile National Bank at Victory and Moore Park opened its doors, it had been held up by a man and a woman. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This week on Warner Home Theater. I just want a pack of cigarettes. It seemed like the worst thing that could happen. How did you learn to do that? Who taught me? But Henry Turner is getting better. You're doing it, man. You're doing it, baby. And better. I didn't like showing affection in public. I don't mind so much anymore. And better. Harrison Ford. I'm sorry. A Mike Nichols film. That's okay. I do that all the time. You do? Regarding Henry. Yeah. See? Rated PG-13. There's a new teacher in our community. One that opens worlds of thought and makes complex topics clear. And an understanding of part of the ancient history of Egypt. That teacher is cable TV, known as Cable in the Classroom. It's a teaching tool and a nationally recognized source of educational programming. Funded here by Warner Cable. The bank detail is composed of six men, broken into three teams of two men each. When available, all three units converge on the scene of a robbery. Bill and I were working as one of those teams. You know, see if you can get that guy to move out of the way, will you? Thought I'd take more park, less traffic. Yeah, whoever hit the bank's got five minutes on us now. 1K82, calling 1K80. This is 80. Just arriving at the bank, we'll take the inside. You and Gannon want to cover the street. Roger. You fellows from downtown? Bank detail, Friday and Gannon. The team inside asked me to fill you in. All right. According to the witnesses, the male suspect's about 40, around 6'2", 200 pounds. White shirt and blue jeans. What about the woman? A little younger. Redhead, wearing a yellow dress. She scooped up the money in a pillowcase. Mauve. What's that? Mauve, M-A-U-V-E, that's what they said. A mauve pillowcase. Any witnesses out here? Yes, sir, a few. They said the suspects escaped in a blue sedan. I got F.I. cards on those who couldn't stay around. Are any of them still here? Dr. Philip Lang. He's over there with my partner. He should be a good witness. Why do you say that? He's an eye doctor. Ten twenty a.m. Dr. Philip Lang agreed to cancel an appointment and accompany us on a search of the area. He had seen the escape car and he was certain he would recognize it if he saw it again. We began to cruise the immediate area in the vicinity of the bank that was just held up. We drove slowly up and down the business district and along the neighborhood streets, bordering it in all directions. They leave the getaway car this close to the bank? Yes, yeah, sir. The usual pattern is to use a stolen car and dump it within a few blocks. Just walk away and leave it? Well, sometimes they walk, sometimes they have a switch car waiting. The usual drop spots are service areas, public parking lots, even somebody's carport. Uh, could you slow down a little? Yes, yeah, sir. There's a carport. That looks like it could be the car. Keys are in the ignition. I'll check the house, Joe. Right. Doctor? That's it. 
No doubt about it. That's the holdup car. Did you get the license number? No, sir. That's why I remember the car so well. How do you mean? I didn't catch the license number. That's why I remember everything else about the car so well. Yes, sir. I said it to myself right then. What's that, sir? Philip, I said, you need stronger glasses. The only person at home in the residence at 18 South Maplemore was Mrs. Stuart Riley. She told us the car belonged to no one in her family. She had never seen it before. 10.45 a.m., Bill ran the license number of the blue sedan through DMV. We also called SID. 11.03 a.m., Leighton Prince came out to check the car over. Registration car should read Jana Altman. It does. 1005 St. Alban Street. That's right. Checked her through r &I. No record. Shook the car, found this under the back seat. Let's check her bed. Her bed? Maybe she's shy, one pillowcase. We arranged to have the blue sedan towed away to an impound garage. Then we drove directly to St. Alban Street. The team inside the bank told us that the bandits had gotten away with less than $300. The woman in the yellow dress had carried the money out of the bank. Mr. Vincent, I'll be happy to take a cab. Could you hold on a minute, yes? Jana Altman? Yes, but I'm very busy. We're police officers. Oh, well, you certainly got here in a hurry. Come on in. I'm sorry, Mr. Vincent. What was that? Yes, the police are here now. I will the moment I can. Such service, I'm overwhelmed. Ma'am? I mean, I reported it not ten minutes ago, and here you are. Reported what? About my car. Well, that's why you're here, isn't it? You live here alone? Yes, but what's that got to do with my car? I suppose eventually you'll get around to telling me the reason for all this. License number of your car, JXO237? Yes, I reported all that. You mean your car was stolen? Well, of course it was stolen. When? Last night, this morning, I don't know when. It wasn't in my parking space when I went to drive to the office. What time do you usually leave for work? 9.15. Well, it's after 11 now. I'm well aware of that, Sergeant. That was my employer I was just talking to. You've been out of this apartment today? I told you. I went out to my car. It was gone. I came back here and phoned my office. Then I reported it. Then my employer phoned me. Then you showed up. Mm-hmm. Be back in a minute, Joe. Right. Well, Sergeant, I suppose you're ready to give me some explanation for all this. Yes, ma'am. Your car was used in a bank robbery this morning. Seriously? My car? You're kidding. Yes, ma'am. A man and a woman. Really? This woman was described as about 30, red hair, wearing a yellow dress. Do you own a yellow dress, Miss Altman? Yes, I own a yellow two-piece shantung, a yellow Dacron shirt, waist, and a yellow peekaboo lace sheet. Could you be a little more specific? Why, you're doing just fine. Could I check your closet? Don't you need a search warrant for that? Not if I have your permission. Suppose I don't give it. Then I'll get a search warrant. Oh, go ahead. Everyone owns a yellow dress. They're in there. Thank you. says she drove off in her car before nine this morning. A couple hours later, returned in a cab. Yeah. Found out since then she changed her clothes. Pool man happened to notice what she was wearing this morning? Yellow dress. Uh-huh. Think that's enough? Along with that, yeah. Monthly parole report. I wonder how often I should save the pages I'm working on. You'd like to know more about color graphics. You need to know how windows work. Are these windows going to change my original document? You'd like to know the difference between personal computers. For everything you need to know and would like to know about computers, there's Understanding Computers from Time Life Books. Call now to examine your first book, Computer Basics, free for 10 days. Keep it and pay just $14.99, then other books will follow. Cancel any time. You'll learn the terms they don't explain in computer magazines or manuals to make learning about computers easy, even if you've never used one before. Whatever you need or would like to know, understanding computers begins with Time Life Books. Call 1-800-247-7900 to examine computer basics free for 10 days. Keep it and pay just $14.99 plus shipping and handling. Other books will follow. Cancel anytime. Call 1-800-247-7900. Very hip, very cool, very Friday. Right. Dragnet, every night on Nick at Night.
advised Jana Altman of her rights and took her downtown. She had no lawyer, but expected one would be obtained for her by her employer. 12.25 p.m., a policewoman made a personal search of the suspect. She reported finding neither money nor a weapon. She's dressed, Joe. You can go in. Right. How busy are you? Nothing. They can't wait. Why? You want me to stay? We'd appreciate it. Be glad to. I hope you don't mind. This young woman said it was all right. Now, you've been advised of your rights, Miss Altman. You don't have to talk to us until your lawyer gets here. But that's the problem. I can't be sure one is coming. It's quite possible I no longer have a job. You see, I worked for an old line conservative firm. That's why I lied to you. You knew I was lying, didn't you? Yes, ma'am. You want to tell us the truth now? Might as well. Can't be any worse off than this, can I? What time did you leave your apartment this morning? A little earlier than usual to do some shopping. My car was there. That was lie number one. Yes, ma'am. I made my purchases. I just got back into my car. Where did you do your shopping? The Devon Plaza. A man got in beside me, right there in the middle of the parking lot. There were a dozen people within 20 feet of me. Yes, ma'am. But he had a gun. I didn't move. I didn't scream. And he said very matter-of-factly, as if he'd rehearsed every word, this is what we're going to do, lady. We're going to rob a bank. And that's exactly what we did. One step at a time, Miss Altman. Just as it happened, please. Well, he said he'd keep everybody quiet while I gathered up all the money. Then he handed me a pillowcase. What color? What color? I don't... Yes, it was a sort of washed-out lavender. All right, go on. Well, he made me walk into the bank, and he pointed the gun at a teller and said, this is a stick-up or something like that. Nobody moved. He motioned to me, and I got all the money I could reach and put it in the pillowcase. I had no choice, Sergeant. I had to do what he said. Surely you can see that. What happened next? Well, he took my arm and walked me outside, and then he said, here's where we part company. Thanks a lot, lady. And he drove away in my car. How'd you get back home? In a cab. Well, why didn't you wait until the police arrived? I've already explained that. This firm I work for is very conservative. They don't care for this kind of publicity. Was that the only reason? Certainly. Do you have a record, Miss Altman? What? I said, do you have a police record? Have you ever been arrested? You must have checked your files by this time. Did you find anything? No, ma'am, not in our files. Well, then. But if it was out of state, it wouldn't be in our records. Well, Miss Altman? You said you were going to tell us the truth. I've done that. I've told you the truth. No, ma'am, you haven't. You've got a record in Oklahoma City. You did time there, and you've been placed on parole. You were granted permission to leave the state. You moved out here. Now, as an out-of-state parolee, you have to make monthly reports to a local P.O. He's got your record on file. I suppose you take it from there. Have you talked to Mr. Ralston? Yes, ma'am. Then you know all about it. Well, why don't you tell us anyway? I was married once. William T. Crow, a handsome, charming man who just happened to be a compulsive gambler. He was always broke, always in debt. I kept buying him out of trouble. I made a good salary, but it was never enough, so I borrowed. Never very much, but often. It adds up that way, and when you get caught, it's not borrowing. You know what it's called, don't you, Sergeant? Embezzlement. You divorced now? Oh, yes, I'm divorced. It took 18 months in prison to do it, but I finally got him out of my system. Where's your ex-husband now? I don't know. We'll want a description of him. Why? Just routine. Routine? You think he's the man who robbed the bank. That's right, isn't it? You don't believe anything I've said. You make it a little difficult, lady. Why? I told you the truth. Sure you did. Three different ways. One fifteen p.m., Jenna Altman was booked for armed robbery. On our recommendation, bail was set low. She was released within two hours. Her car was released from impound. We placed her under surveillance. She went directly home. She stayed there. At 8 p.m., we knocked off for the day. Wednesday, August 5th, we continued a hit and miss surveillance with no results. The suspect went to work, she went out for lunch, she went home again. If she made any contact with the male suspect, it had to be by telephone. Thursday, August 6th, Jana Altman checked into her office building at the regular time. Control 327 to 1K80, 81, and 82. Just had a good one. Mercantile National Bank. Sherman and Oxnard. Two cocks, male and female. They're armed. There's 1K80 to control. We'll take it. to 
1K80. This is 80. Disregard. 1K82 will handle. Woman just called in. She's in the Red Quill Bar. Claims she was just forced to help rob a bank. KMA 367. Now you can roll away unsightly debris from carpets, roll away stubborn lint or dandruff in seconds. Clinging pet hair on skirts and sweaters, roll it up and rinse it away. Introducing Magic Roller. It picks it up, you rinse it off, and use it again and again. Don't struggle cleaning old-fashioned clothing brushes or replacing messy paper refills. Magic Roller's permanent silicon surface lasts and lasts. Its space-age roller penetrates so thoroughly. Watch it pull the print right off a newspaper, yet it's gentle enough to use on this delicate cashmere sweater. Call or send now, and you also receive this fold-away travel-size Magic Roller. Its magnet-like action attracts dust lint and hair just like the big household model you get them both for only 14.98 magic roller is ideal for car seats mats and slip covers fresh and upholstered furniture lampshades needlepoint pick up dirt dust and debris your vacuum missed and you might not even see magic roller is the best clothing brush on the market it has hundreds of uses and best of all it rinses right off. Call or send to Magic Roller at this address now. You get both home and travel Magic Rollers for only $14.98. Order more than one set and take $2 off every additional set you order. Be sure to order today. Those lips, those eyes, that gosh awful sound. It could only be Ren and Stimpy. Oh, joy of joy. Ren and Stimpy, Ren and Stimpy, Ren and Stimpy. Like bongos beating on your brain, it's Nickelodeon's new cartoon. What is it, man? You hear it, you see it, you want to turn away, but you can't. Dark, bonding man. Too twisted for anyone but Nick. It's Ren and Stimpy, one of the Nick tunes every Sunday morning at 11, 10 central on Nick. For big TV pleasure, oh, may I say, it's a television treasure, Nick at Night is A-OK. -okay. 10.45 a.m., we drove directly to the Red Quill Bar. It was less than half a block from the bank that had just been robbed. The woman had told the office her name was Mrs. Carl Ripplin. I don't mind telling you what happened, but if it's all the same to you, Sergeant, I'd like to finish this first. Bartender, where's the bottom half of this? Will you boys join me? No, thanks. No, thanks. Do you mind telling us what happened? I just stopped for a red light. This young man climbed into my car. I told him I didn't pick up hitchhikers and he'd have to get out. He pointed a gun at me. That's a terrible experience, Sergeant. Yes, ma'am. You stare at it knowing if you do something wrong, you're going to be killed. What did you do? Just what he told me. I went into the bank with him and gathered up all the money and put it into a pillowcase he'd given me. Would you go on, please? When we got outside, he took my car and left me standing there. I knew there were three things I could do. I had to make a choice. Yes, ma'am. I could faint or start screaming or have a drink. Yes, ma'am. This is my fourth. Twelve noon. We had a series of robberies going. The same bandit had robbed both banks. The descriptions of him matched up. The M.O. was the same. And Mrs. Ripplin's account was identical to the one given us by Jana Altman. 12.35 p.m. Bill and I, along with the other two bank detail teams, met with the captain of robbery division, Captain Mert Howe. This last job kind of takes the heat off the Altman woman, doesn't it? Looks that way, Captain. You think that was the purpose? It's possible. It's been done before. How do the rest of you feel about it? Well, I wouldn't rule it out, Captain, but it wasn't the only purpose. Yeah? Thief walked out with over $4,000 on his last job. He only got 300 out of the Devon branch with the Altman woman. Just three days apart. He must have a big overhead. Gambler, maybe. So was Jan Altman's ex-husband. Unless we get something bigger than that Friday, we'll have to consider rejecting it when she answers the writ. Couple of things going for us, Skipper. What's that? Two branches of the Merck National. He's probably not going to change banks now. Uh-huh. And so far, he's hit between 10 and 11 a.m. Joe, where did you find the hostage cars? Dumped within three blocks of each job. Could he live in the area? Nothing in the ammo book. No, sir, he's a new one. Well, what do you think? Rolling stake out? About the only way we can handle it. All right, work out your own schedule. Friday? Yes, sir. The Altman woman? Yes, sir. Clearer or keeper? Tuesday.
Tuesday, August 11th, the rolling stakeout was in its fourth day. Between 10 a.m. and noon, at least one unit was cruising the area. From noon until the banks closed, we made follow-up interviews of witnesses to both robberies. Nothing developed. Friday, August 14th, the banks were open until 6 o'clock. 4.30 p.m., the hostage bandit hit again. We were at the wrong end of the stakeout area. 4.40 p.m., it was the same story. The suspect had used a woman hostage again. This time, the woman was waiting for us right in front of the bank. Are you police? Yes, ma'am. Robbery detail. Well, I was waiting for the light to change when he stuck his head in the window. He acted like he was in an awful hurry, said he was late for work, and if I'd give him a lift as far as Arlington, he'd pay me a dollar. Yes, ma'am. Well, he looked all right, clean, kind of good-looking, in fact. And he gave me the dollar. I told him I was going to Arlington anyway, but he said I was doing him a big favor, and it was worth it. Some favor. You know what he did? No, ma'am. Suppose you tell us. You'd think he'd stolen enough money. Yes, ma'am. That pillowcase, I stuffed it full of bills for him. Must have been hundreds there. Can you imagine the gall of the man? He only gave me one dollar. Yes, ma'am. I used at least five dollars worth of gas. The pattern of the third robbery was identical with the previous two. Even the hostage car was found in the same area. 6.30 p.m. On our way home, we stopped off to see Jana Altman. Will you sit down, or aren't we staying that long? We'll stand, thanks, anyway. Sure we're not interrupting anything? No, no, nothing pressing. You'll have to excuse me. I don't recognize this approach. What is it this time? You know you're going to have to appear on that writ. Yes, I'm well aware of that. That's what we came to tell you, Miss Altman. It's going to be rejected. Rejected? Yes, ma'am. The charge will be withdrawn. Why? Don't think I'm ungrateful, but why? The same man robbed two more banks. He picked up women to help him, just like you. You arrested them, too? No, ma'am, not yet. Why not? For one thing, Miss Altman, both of the other women voluntarily contacted us to report the robberies. You didn't, did you? We'll notify your parole officer, and if you like, we'll tell your employer that you've been cleared. Thank you. That would help. Sergeant. Yes, ma'am? What's the sentence for robbing a bank? Twenty-five years for each conviction. It's hardly worth it, is it? Well, that's the idea. They want to make it an unpopular crime. Is it? Not in Los Angeles. This is the bank robbery capital of the world. 1949, there were eight bank robberies here. Now we're averaging over 140 a year. How do you account for it? A lot of reasons, I guess. Branch banking, for one. Used to be you went downtown to bank. Now every shopping area has a branch. And then there's the way they build them, mostly for public relations, you know. In the old days, tellers were in cages. The modern bank is just right for counter jumpers and note writers and the on-ramp specialists. The what? A bank built near a freeway. By the time we reach the scene, a bandit can be 20 miles away. What about this hostage bandit? Yes, ma'am. Think you'll catch him? Well, it's hard to say, Miss Altman, but the numbers are pretty good. What do you mean? In this city, 80% of the cases are cleared. Friday, August 21st, the rolling stakeout continued. 4.10 p.m. All units in the vicinity, a 211 silent alarm, Mercantile National Bank, 3227 Langersham, 15 Adam 27, handle code 3. Hit it once. <laughs> Yeah, the money's in that bag, and that's his gun. I disarmed him, first thing. Yes, ma'am, are you all right? Yes, just a little scared. I'll put him in the black and white, Joe. Right. wonder if I could have your name, please. Doris Colbert, miss. All right, do you want to tell me what happened here, Miss Colbert? Well, you're not going to believe this, but uh, that man made me help him rob a bank. I believe it. He made me park my car out there in front. We walked up to the plaza. Could I sit down? I'm still a little bit shaky. Sure. Some people will tell you they're only scared after it's all over. They're lucky. I was petrified every second. You sure didn't look it. Well, I was. But it suddenly occurred to me as we were walking out of the bank that this was the very situation I've been telling my students about. Yes, ma'am. 
in case they were ever attacked, you know, how to defend themselves. You can even disarm a man if you know how. Yes, ma'am. Well, I know how. I've been demonstrating it for years. I teach karate. Yes, ma'am. First time I've ever had to put it in practice. You know, it really works. I know. I gave him a chop on the forearm, and that gun must have jumped six feet. Then I really went after him. Now, you did fine, Miss Colbert. Control 327 to 1K80. Mercantile National Bank, Lancashire Branch. Looks like the hostage bin. It is. We have him in custody. You want to take him downtown while Gannon and I finish up here? Right, Sergeant. Stinking broad, I can't believe it. What's that? Imagine a stinking broad wiping up the sidewalk with you. That dame's as strong as an ox. Sure, she must weigh at least 120 pounds. What is she, a lady wrestler? Linebacker for the Cleveland Browns. Take him in. Right, Sergeant. I didn't hurt him, did I? Not where it shows. You know, Sergeant, one thing really bugs me. What's that? Well, he told me he'd give me a dollar if I'd give him a lift. Just a couple of blocks, he said. Yeah. I told him I didn't want the dollar, but he insisted. So you took it? That's right. And after I filled that pillowcase full of money, went through all that holdup business in the bank. Yes, ma'am. The nerve of that slob. What's that? He made me give him the dollar back. The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On October 20th, trial was held in courtroom 54, United States District Court Central Division of the Southern District of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. It's coming. It's Nick at Night's Bunch of Brady, a week-long festival of everything Brady. Only Nick at Night could bring it all together. Ten classic Brady Bunch episodes, a very Brady Christmas, the Brady Brides, the Brady Kids, the Brady Variety Hour, and Brady Mania, a special with all the show's greatest moments. Hawaii! Plus, you could win a very Brady vacation. Send a postcard with your name and address to Nick at Night's Bunch of Brady Sweepstakes, P.O. Box 4908, Orlando, Florida, 32802. One grand prize winner will take their whole bunch, that's nine people all together, to Hawaii to surf where Greg did and hula like Alice did, along with $5,000. One first prize winner will win a year's worth of weekly housekeeping. And 100 second prize winners get Alice's Brady Bunch Cookbook. Enter today and watch Bunch of Brady only on Nick at Night. Nick at Night's Bunch of Brady Sweepstakes is brought to you by Paramount Pictures' The Brady Bunch Movie, opening February 17th at theaters everywhere. The Flapjacks are still flopping around. They're back. The and they're still groovy. The new John Brady. Far out. All right, this is a car, Jack. Well, of course this is a car. Yeah, but my name's not Jack. It's Greg. Neato. What'd you bring? Pork chops and applesauce. And out of sight. Oh. Dinner's ready. Oh. The Brady Bunch movie. Now I'll never be a teen model. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, February 17th at theaters everywhere. The suspect was found guilty on four counts of bank robbery. Bank robbery is a federal offense which is punishable by imprisonment for not more than 25 years on each count. you expect but it's up and coming it's right in front of you 
It's the life of the party, the word on the street. It's in, it's always, and it's about time. It's where we're at, it's what you want, it's on your mind, it's in your mouth, it's pork, and it's catching on. The other white meat. Taste what's next. For some, it was love at first sight. For others, I don't like you. Share the magic as Very, Very Nick at Night brings you at all. Very, Very When We First Met. This Sunday, join three TV Land couples as they meet for the very first time. Hey, baby, how about a little kiss? And see the chemistry that makes it good TV. I didn't be a cute couple. It's Very, Very When We First Met. This Sunday at 9, 8 central on Very, Very Nick at Night. Brought to you by Diet Coke and Sprint. Hang in there. Tonight's uninterrupted Hitchcock tale is coming up. Nick at Night's historic 79-hour cable cast of the Dick Van Dyke Collection begins this Saturday at 8, 7 central. Nick at Night is preserving our television heritage. And now, tonight's Hitchcock tale. Uncut on Nick at Night. Just trying out a new product. It's for people who are afraid to face reality. For the man who has everything and can't stand to look at it. We're doing a very brisk business. One of the appeals of the box is its anonymity. But inside our boxes are some very important people. Several heads of state. At a very modest additional cost, we have this popular attachment. You will observe there are no eye holes. It is for those people who buy one of these and then find they cannot face the reality of the inside of the box. As you can see, we have boxes to fit any size or shape of head or problem. All this has nothing to do with tonight's story. One of the family, which begins after the following commercial. And that is one minute of reality I intend to miss. Now, big cleaning performance, lightweight and cordless. Boss Light cleans bare floors, then turn on the brush roll for carpets. So affordable, you'll want two. Cordless Boss Light from Eureka, the next generation. Hello out there from TV land, a beautiful place to be. Nick at night, better living through good TV. We now return to Alfred Hitchcock Presents on Nick at Night. Mrs. Daly? Yes. Well, you must be Frida. How do you do? Come in, please. Thank you. Where's Mr. Daly? Didn't he meet you at the bus depot? No. Well, isn't that funny? He left ages ago. I'm surprised he missed you. There were plenty of taxes. Oh. I guess you'd like to see your room. It's back here. Oh, no. Thank you. First, the baby. I want more to see him. He's asleep right now, but you can take a peek in a minute. This way. Here we 
door. I hope you'll find it comfortable. Very nice. Everything. Oh, your bathroom is over there. Oh, and real flowers. Makes the room so gemütlich. Oh, uh, and your own TV set. Do you like to watch television? Hmm. Not so much anymore. They took off my program. <clears throat> oh, what was that? Wrestling. Wrestling? The baby's in here. May I please? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Oh. oh. Hey, mister. You're supposed to be asleep. Yes, oh. my darling. <laughs> Such a beautiful baby. <laughs> <laughs> Even more beautiful than his papa. <laughs> For eight years I was like his mama to Mr. Daly. Mutti, he called me. Oh, I know. He's talked about you a lot. What a wonderful nurse his Mutti was. Yes. I think we're going to agree with him. Mm. I am Mutti. My little Dixie. <laughs> Oh, that must be Dex. Dex, we're in the nursery. Hi. Hello, How'd sweetie. How'd you get here? Hmm. By cab. I guess you missed her. Well, I don't see how. I was there when the Bakersfield bus came in. I watched every passenger get off. She's here with the baby. Mooty! Oh. How good to see you. Daily. <laughs> I looked all over for you. What happened? Oh, I looked for you, too, but uh, I think maybe my bus was early. Well, I, I did, too, but I checked, and there was only one bus from Bakersfield this you morning. You probably just didn't recognize each other. Oh, I'd recognize her anywhere. She's just as I remember her. You haven't changed a bit. Still the same old Mooty. Oh, I have changed. Too much coffee cooking, <laughs> you remember. Do I? I haven't tasted anything like your cooking since. Oh, they just... Don't take care of me like that anymore. Oh, poor neglected Dexter. <laughs> what do you think of our boy? He's a darling baby. And can a schnooky puss. <laughs> schnooky puss. That's what you used to call me. Hi, schnooky puss. <laughs> well, I guess if you could handle me, you ought to be able to take care of him for a couple of months by yourself. Oh, you are going away? Both? Yeah. If everything works out all right, we're going to take a trip to Europe. Oh, of course, we wouldn't leave until you're all settled in and organized. Oh, I'm sure that won't take long, Mrs. Daly. I'm so happy to have a little Dixie again. You don't know how happy we are to have you with us, Frida. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Made by Mooty, the tender loving care. Not for breakfast, please. She'll be hurt. Maybe later. You asked for it. Anyway, she thinks you're too skinny. He needs some meat on his bones. You mean flab. There's a time when I could have knocked off two of those without batting an eye. Not anymore. Frida, what have you got there? Little Dex's diapers. I'm going to wash them. I thought I told you we have a diaper service. Yes, but I canceled it. It's a waste of money, Mrs. Daly. I always like to do it myself. Pretty, would you please let me decide what's a waste of money? Call the diaper service and ask them to come as usual. Yes, ma'am. She's inclined to take a little too much on herself. She meant well. After all, sweetie, you can't have it both ways. Either she takes over or she doesn't. And besides, if she wants to save me money... Yes, but I think that's overdoing the old country frugality bit, don't you? What's the matter, hon? Isn't it working with you two? It's fine. No, really, Dex, she's wonderful. She really is. The baby's crazy about her. Well, I wish she'd stop calling him Dexy. Sounds like a girl or a riverboat gambler. Well, it's not as bad as Junior. Besides... She called me Dexy, and it didn't seem to do me any harm. Hmm. <sighs> Say, uh, how about night on the town? Oh. Well, we've got a built-in babysitter worth her weight in gold. Why not get our money's worth? Don't you think it's a little too soon? Isn't that why we hired Frida? Mm-hmm. You got a date? Good. <laughs> what time will you be home? 
Well, uh, I'll try to get away early. Why don't you plan to be ready about six? Okay. Stay tuned for local news and weather. Charges and counter charges were violently exchanged at a city council meeting yesterday over the proposed freeway route through West Los Angeles. In San Francisco, violence of a different order is suspected in connection with the recent death of the six-month-old son of Mr. and Mrs. George Callender. The discovery of a bottle containing an arsenic compound has led to a demand for the exhumation of the infant's body. In an interview with our reporter, police captain Martin Grauman explained that the child's nurse, an elderly woman of German origin, is being sought for questioning. Meanwhile, the parents... What's with the radio? I've turned it off. And anyone having knowledge of the person fitting this description should get in touch with the local police. Now for the weather. Partly cloudy, clearing tomorrow morning with temperatures oh, in the uh, 70s. Excuse me, I... I thought we did finished breakfast. Oh, that's all right. Just one for the road. Oh, uh... He was tempted, but he didn't have time. We keep. Rita, Mr. Daly and I thought we'd go out for dinner tonight. Do you think you'll be all right? Oh, yes, Mrs. Daly. Little Dex and I, we will be fine. Good. This is the way to live. No babysitter to drive home, no four o'clock feeding, huh? Oh, oh, that's just what I need to soak up some. Oh, boy, nothing like having a nurse around to do everything for you. Sure takes a sting out of being a parent. You are an unnatural father. <laughs> What is it? It's nothing, ma'am. Then why is he screaming like that? Oh, our little Dex, he has a tummy ache, ma'am. Oh, no. It's only a bad tummy ache, nothing else. Uh, did you take his temperature? Yeah. He has a small fever. Oh. But with babies, that's nothing. Oh, what do you mean, nothing? I've never heard him scream like that before. How long has he been like this? Only a little while. How long? <clears throat> After his bottle, he sleeps good, and then he wakes up, and, and he has a clumpy. A what? A pain in his tummy. I'm going to call the doctor. But there's no need for the doctor. It's not serious. I'm not asking for your advice, Frida. <laughs> At Nick at Night, we never sleep. Next, it's The White Shadow, followed by The Dick Van Dyke Show and Dragnet. Nick at Night, open all night, every night.
What a party. All of Hollywood is here. You know that HBO movie you love so much? Don't look now. The director is right over there by the sculpture. I've just got to meet him. The man is a legend. Check that. He's a genius in the making. Excuse me. Do you have any idea how excited I am to meet you? No. I loved your last film. It was so gutsy, intense. No one else makes movies like that. I can't believe I'm actually standing here talking to you. Neither can I. I have to tell you, that HBO movie really spoke to me. HBO talked about movies. Movies that matter. HBO makes them, and you don't want to miss them. Don't tell me you didn't direct that. Don't worry. I won't. drive cars from Subaru. Each looks beautiful on the surface. Any surface. Subaru all-wheel drive is the ultimate safety feature. It reacts instantly, transferring power automatically from the wheels that slip to the wheels that grip to help keep you safely on the road, even where there are no roads. The all-surface, all-weather, all-wheel drive line from Subaru. Subaru. The beauty of all-wheel drive. We now return to Alfred Hitchcock Presents on Nick at Night. <laughs> Little stinker scared the pants off us last night, and now look at him. Uh, you haven't seen anything yet. They know every trick in the book. The object is to turn you prematurely gray. Your favorite was to roll over on your stomach. Hold your breath until you were blue in the face. All right, all right. Let's not give him any more ideas. Oh, very neat, dear. Please. <laughs> oh, thank you, Frida. Uh, mother, this is Frida. Frida, this is my mother, Mrs. Landon. Hello. Now, you were Mr. Daly's nurse, too, weren't you? Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. Uh, shall I take him out for his nap now, Mrs. Daly? Please, Frida. Frida was the only one who didn't panic last night. She said it was a cramp fee, and a cramp fee it was. Excuse me. What on earth is a cramp fee? A German tummy ache. Oh. And the doctor agreed with her. He wouldn't oh. even come out to look at him. So she sat up with the baby all night long. Well, you seem to have acquired an absolute jewel, dear. Mm. I'm beginning to appreciate that. Mm. Mine she didn't get too bossy, though. Mm. I think I nipped that in the bud. Good. There's nothing worse than the overbearing ones. I get too possessive and end up hating you. No, no, not Frida. Last night I was so panicked I nearly snapped her head off. She took it like a lamb, sat up with the baby all night, and when I told her you were coming this morning, she made this tort. Very sweet. No calories, of course. <laughs> mm. It's delicious mm. and pure disaster. Oh, well. Nine extra holes of golf to take care of it. No, listen, Dexter says he's going to have to start playing handball again. Uh... Last night, he ate half a coffee cake she'd made for him. She's really a menace. Well, if that's all you have to worry about, you're in good shape. Did you read about that other darling German nanny up in San Francisco? Who fed the baby arsenic. Oh, no. Really? What happened? The poor child died. The police found the bottle behind the dresser in the nurse's room. Enough arsenic to kill a dozen babies. Oh, no. I thought you'd have read about it, you know. I was really relieved when you told me you'd hired this Frida woman. I wasn't exactly looking forward to babysitting with Junior. Well, you and Dexter were gallivanting around Europe for two months on a tax-deductible trip. Mother, you read my mind. Hardly a feat to qualify us as a clairvoyant act, darling. <laughs> if you hadn't have asked me, I'd have felt rejected, but I was relieved. Mm, it's delicious. I've got to stop. I'll have to order a whole new fall wardrobe. <laughs> Wait a minute now. You didn't finish your story about the nurse in San Francisco. What was her name? Oh, some fairy tale name, Hansel and Gretel. Oh. No, it was Gretchen. That's it, Gretchen Reuter. Mm. Well, did they catch her? No. She seems to have disappeared, but they're still looking for her. Of course, they'll never catch her. Those ridiculous descriptions. Six-dish, German accent. You know, that could be Frida. <laughs> Or a thousand other German nannies. <laughs> Darling, it was delicious, but I've got to run. Give my love to Dexter, huh? Mm -hmm. And uh, if she gets too bossy, I'll take her as a cook. Oh, you will, huh? <laughs> Bye, darling. Well, your tort certainly made a hit with my mother. I'm happy she liked my torte. 
Matter of fact, she liked it so much, she'd like to steal you away just to cook for her. <laughs> I like to cook, but not to cook only. A house with no babies, not for Frida. <laughs> That's a relief. By the way, Frida, have you seen the morning paper? I can't seem to find it. Oh, I used it to wrap up the garbage. I thought you were finished. Oh, well, Mr. Daly will bring one home tonight. I meant to ask you something, Mrs. Daly. Mm -hmm. uh, when Mr. Daly was little, I used to give him ground steak sometimes. You know, raw. I scrape it good with a spoon. Uh, what do you think for little Dexter now, too? Oh, I don't like to alter his diet without asking Dr. Beaumont first. But I'll check when he comes back from vacation. Frida, don't you think four months is a little young for raw meat? It's very strengthening. But it is. Why don't you ever listen to the radio, Frida? I like it better quiet when I'm out here so I can hear if Dexie cries. Oh, oh, yes, of course, you're right. Always on the job, Frida. Oh, listen, that reminds me. I have to uh, get your social security number so that I can declare you. Declare me? Why must you declare me? <laughs> you make it sound like it's something terrible. Actually, it's only a matter of form. You know, if you let your social security lapse, you won't be eligible for pensions and things like that. It's for your own protection. Oh, I protect myself, Mrs. Daly. I save my money. I ask help from nobody. Not even the government. Well, that's very admirable of you, Frida. But it's a matter of law. I have to declare you and pay half your taxes. Would you bring me your card when you're finished there, please? I have no card. I never joined the Social Security. But didn't your previous employers tell you... They tell me, but I do nothing and they do nothing. Well, I have to do something. I don't want to be put in the position of breaking the law, and I'm sure you don't either. I'll have to get you a card. Now, it's uh, Frida Schmidt, isn't it? And your husband's name? Heinrich. Heinrich. And what was the name of your last employer? Oh, now look at this mess. Um, my last employer was Mrs. Muller. Muller. M U E L L E R. M U E L L E R. And the first name? Frank. Mr. and Mrs. Frank Muller. And their address? Bakersfield. Could you be more specific? The name of the street? I'm not so sure these Americans' names, they are still very difficult for me. Oh, come now, Frida, you must remember the name of the street. What was the address? There is no street, just a big house near the highway. Oh, you excuse me, Mrs. Daly. Uh, little Dexie wants his bottle and we go out for a little walk. Just a minute, Frida. I seem to remember getting a Christmas card from you uh, from San Francisco. Did you work there before going to Bakersfield? No, ma'am. I never worked in San Francisco. Are man's two greatest inventions. I'll buy them both. The wheel and the martini. The wheel gets you to work and the martini gets you through the day. 
Say, honey, about my trip to New York tomorrow. You coming? I could stretch it through the weekend. Oh, no sale. Something wrong? Dex, did you get a reference on Frida? A reference on Frida? Mm -hmm. Well, it never occurred to me. She's like one of the family. What brought this on? I don't know. Well, I was asking her where she'd worked before she came here, you know, for the social security thing. Yeah? She wouldn't tell me. What do you mean she wouldn't tell you? Said she couldn't remember the address. Well, she couldn't. Well, there's a slight difference. Really? You don't believe that one can forget the address of a place where one worked and lived? Well, that might depend on how long one worked and lived there and how long ago. And you didn't think to ask anything like that or, or the name of the people she worked for or how long? Or... Right. Right. I didn't ask because I didn't care. Try that. An old German nurse you haven't heard from in 20 years calls you from out of the blue and says, do you happen to meet a nurse mine client of Schnuckelpuss? And Schnuckelpuss can't wait to make her one of the family. What's this all about, Joyce? This. Yes, now, now, do you remember getting a Christmas card from Frida from San Francisco this year? Do I have to swear to it? Well, I would. Just, just look at this. I saw it at breakfast. What about it? What do you mean, what about it? This is why you're not going to New York with me, isn't it? He's sick again, ma'am. Maybe you'd better come. For the strong, there is more to come. Our second half follows this word from a distant station. I'm a pretty good volleyball player, but I'm not gold medal material. But Grandpa and I are supporting the U.S. volleyball team as they go for the gold this summer in Barcelona. And you can too. For every Orville Redenbacher's purchase you make, we'll make a donation to this year's team. It takes a lot of dedication to be the best. I learned that from my grandpa. As he always says, do one thing and do it better than anyone. Hey, Jack, you better get it together. That's the house that Rubber made. That's the house that Rubber made. Rubber made. Rubber made. Rubber made. Jack. Made. Yeah, well, if you pull this up here, that little old tummy acting up again, huh? He's never had any trouble like this before, not twice in a few days. Yeah, there's, there's a virus going around. I think that's what hit him the other day. This could be just a flare-up. Shouldn't last more than, oh, another 24 hours. Why this all of a sudden? He was perfectly healthy until a week ago. Hmm. So are a lot of other babies and adults. Oh, uh, plenty of liquids and keep him warm. Yes, Doctor. Mrs. Daly, why don't you relax? Now you have an excellent nurse. Thank you. Let her do the worrying, huh? <laughs> I'll try to do that. <coughs> oh, Dr. Rocco. How's the patient? <laughs> Nothing wrong with his lungs. <laughs> oh, I guess not. By this time tomorrow, he's going to be screaming for something to eat. <laughs> oh, uh, I'll be at the hospital all day tomorrow, Mrs. Daly. You can leave any messages for me at my office. Thank you, Dr. You bet. Hi, honey. Hi. What's the trouble, son? Hmm? Bloody ache again. Is that what it is, huh? Why don't you quit bugging your mother? A bag packed, honey? Mm, it's ready. We ought to be going soon. Oh, Dex, I don't like to leave him when he's like this. Will you just drive me to the airport? I know. Okay, I'll drive myself then. <coughs> uh, troublemaker. <laughs> oh, Frida, uh, I'll be going for a couple of days. Look after them. Hmm? Don't you worry, Mr. Daly. I'll take him. No. Just leave him there. He may go to sleep. Dex? Honey, you didn't say goodbye. Didn't I? Oh, <laughs>
Oh, darling, I'm sorry I can't go with you. Oh, the joys of parenthood. I can't wait till he starts with the measles and the mumps and the chicken pox. Oh, now listen, if it was something like that, I wouldn't be such an idiot about it. It's this tiny thing. Nobody knows what it really is. Not even the doctor's sure. Oh, he's in such pain. Just listen to him. Oh, I wish Dr. Beaumont were back. I don't trust these cheerful fatherly types like Brock. <laughs> I'm so worried. Easy, sweetheart, easy. The kid's got a bellyache, that's all. I gotta go. Mm, no, Dex. I'll call you in the morning as soon as I find out what hotel I'm staying at. Honey, he'll be all right. Just rely on Frida. Goodbye. Bye. What is that? Something... Something I have for the crampy. I thought I told you never to give my baby anything without asking me. It is what I give to all my little boys. Well, you are not to give it to my little boy. Is that understood? Yeah, it is understood. Yes, I want to place a person-to-person -person call to Mrs. Frank Muller in Bakersfield, California. M-U-E-L-L-E-R. No, I'm sorry, I don't have the number. You'll have to get it from information. Thank you. Please hurry. Yes, Frank Muller. Are you sure? No one by that name. Thank you. Operator, I want to place a call to the George Callender residence in San Francisco. I don't have the number. Thank you. Yes, George Callender. My number is 275-4124. I'll speak with anyone. That's it. Please connect me. Mrs. Callender? I'm sorry. There's no one at home. I'm the maid. Oh. Wouldn't you expect them back? I'm not sure. Would you care to leave a message? Yes. This is Mrs. Daly. I'm calling from Los Angeles. Oh, this is very important. Do you suppose you could have them call me as soon as they return? Uh, my number is 275-4124. Uh, it's about the German nurse. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Daly. Mrs. Callender? Uh, no, th this is Christine Callender. My, my brother and sister-in-law are out of town. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, uh, do you expect them back soon? No, I'm, I'm afraid not. They've, they've gone away for a rest. Oh, yes, of course. This is rather urgent. Well, perhaps I can help you. Uh, the message you left said something about a... 
A German nurse? Do you, do you mean Gretchen Reuter? Yes, I... Well, she's going by a different name, but I really think that... I'm terribly afraid that woman is in my house. What, what makes you think it's the same woman, Mrs. Daly? I can't possibly explain it all over the phone, but I read the description in the newspaper and she fits it. You see, she was my husband's nurse years ago. She came to work for us two weeks ago and she's been acting very strangely. And well, my husband's away. I'm, I'm here alone with my baby and that woman Have is... Have you called the police, Mrs. Daly? Well, I, I can't call them until I'm certain, don't you see? That's why I called you. I have to be sure. Yes, well, perhaps I, I can help you. I have a, a photo of her, one my brother took. It's, it's not very good, but, but it might help. Anything that might identify her, could you send it to me? Yes, yes, of course. I'll, I'll send it out. Airmail special delivery it ought, ought to reach you sometime tomorrow. Meantime, Mrs. Daly, I, I would suggest you, you be very careful. You see, if, if this is the woman, she could be very dangerous. I, I wouldn't let her know that, that you suspect anything or, or that you're upset. It, you see, she's... she's quite insane. Sure, you had the easy life. Utilities, railroads, but you blew it all, didn't you? It was just one game, Warden. But the name of the game is Don't Go to Jail. You gotta roll those dice, form as many groups as you can. But if you push your luck... Go to yes. ...and roll Go to Jail, oh. you lose it all. I'll get another turn. Sure you will, man. Don't Go to Jail, the new Monopoly dice game. For more Monopoly fun, try Advanced to Boardwalk and Free Parking. Twice the power. That makes a big difference. Professional plumbers on Professional Strength Liquid Plumber. All the other liquid drain opener is dilute. This stuff doesn't. It's more powerful. So twice as much power attacks the hair clog and bam. Goodbye, clog. <laughs> Get twice the power to the clog. Christine Callender. Oh. Oh, oh, yes, come in, please. After I hung up, I got worried about you. All alone in this house with that woman. I thought I'd, I'd better come down myself. Where is she? Uh, she's in her room. Oh, dear, I was so sure when I called you. Now I... I don't know. It just has to be her. <laughs> well, if it isn't, we'll both feel rather foolish. Yeah? Is it? Yes. What, what are you going to do? Frida! What are you doing? Get up. What happened? I locked her in the closet. Did you, did you tell her I was here? Well, what am I going to do? I, what am I going to do? If only Dex were here. I, I guess I better call the police here. Yeah, yeah, let me do that. You look after the baby. Operator? Get me the police. Hello? Uh, I'm, I'm calling for Mrs. Dexter Daly. 328 Iskier Drive. Mm -hmm. it, it's an emergency. Uh, I, I believe we have the woman who, who poisoned the calendar baby in San Francisco. She, she's right here in the house. Yes. 
Will, will you send someone out immediately? Mm -hmm. Hurry, please. Well, now, all, all we need to do is, is wait for the police to get here. Shh, no, 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 son, no. Uh, are you all right? What, 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 what? Look, shouldn't, shouldn't you have something? What, is that, is that coffee I smell? I'd love a cup too, if it isn't too much trouble. Well, of course. Forgive me, I'm sorry. Here, let me take him. May I? He. He. <laughs> what a darling. I wish the police would get here. Don't worry, my dear. Everything will work out. It always does. You know, she was my husband's nurse for years. He always knew her as Frida. Frida Schmidt. Is her real name Gretchen Reuter or what? Schmidt was her maiden name, I believe. Her husband was a Heinrich Reuter. That I know. She probably has two Christian names, they usually do. But Gretchen Reuter was the name on her social security card. Oh, then she did have a social security card. Mm -hmm. How she lied. Do you know my husband would stake his life on her? <laughs> Men are like that, my dear. Just children. Oh, here. Let me take him. Such an adorable child. So tiny. What a wallop they pack in those little fists. <laughs> yeah, no, son. Yeah, that's my kitty. No, yeah. This must have been awful for your brother and his wife. Shouldn't you let them know? Why, well, I, I thought I told you that George and Millie had gone off on a trip somewhere. They couldn't take any more. May I? Of course. So I don't blame them exactly. You can imagine what it was like at that house after the baby's death. Oh, yes, sir. I can. No, no, sir. Millie was no help at all. She just fell apart. Well, I can understand that, too. Of course, I warned George that he couldn't rely on her. Never should have married her. You see, we were really very happy. Just the two of us living on in Daddy's house. George needed me to, to look after the place, and of course he took care of the financial worries. We, we were really quite happy, you see. And then, and then she came along. I warned George that, that it was a mistake, that she was no good. But he wouldn't see it. He married her anyway. And then, and then the baby came. It, it was sickening to watch them with that baby. The way they doted. The next thing she wanted was a, a nurse to look after the child. I, I objected strongly, of course. I reminded George of our own childhood with that, that dreadful woman that Daddy had hired to, to look after us. A nurse? Nurse? <laughs> she was more a tyrant, really. We were both terrified of her. You see, Daddy was away a lot on, on business, and, and we had no one to turn to. She used to beat us. I, I told George he, he could never be sure about this right to person. She might be the same type. You see, what happened, I was right. How could anybody do a thing like that? Poison a baby. Oh, she'd have to really be insane, wouldn't she? Insane? No. 
No, no, I don't think so. Not, not really. You'd be surprised. People hate to be pushed around. Even by those soft little hands. They, they, they look so innocent, but they, they can ruin your life. They, they are so innocent, and yet they are so powerful. It, it was because of him that they asked me to leave. Leave my own house, mind you. I, I was in the way. He, he was more important. Of course, I, I, I told George that, that I, I wouldn't leave, that, that I needed time to find my own home. He understood that. And then... And then Nanny started telling the most dreadful stories about me. I, I'm sure she did. It, it was very unpleasant. It was then that George really asked me to leave. So you see what I mean about those, those tiny little fists. And, and the harm they can do. You hated the baby. Hate it? Oh, no. No, I, I didn't hate him. I, I couldn't have loved him more if he'd been mine. But you just said... Did, did, did you hear that? No, what? It's her. She's, she's trying to get out. I didn't hear anything. We, we mustn't let her escape. But she cannot escape. I locked her in. No, we, we, we can't take any chances, you see. We, we've, we've got to be sure. You, 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 you can't trust Nanny. She, she's apt to tell them the most terrible stories about me. And, and I, I can't have that. I've, I've got to take care of her. No, wait. Wait. Yeah, no, no, no. Just... Yeah, wait. Don't you think we should let the police handle it when they get here? The, the, the police? Yes. Oh, oh, no. Well, no. They, 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 they'd be no good at all. They, they, they don't understand about things like this. Well, they, they might even let her go. Oh, no. No, I've, I've, I've got to handle Nanny by myself. But they'll be here any minute. No. <laughs> no, they won't. They're not coming. I, I didn't call them. Not really. I, I was just pretending. No, don't. Oh, no, you, you mustn't try to stop me. I... I've, I've got to talk to Nanny. Surely you must see that. I, I, I knew you were there, Nanny. You did? I've, I've been looking for you for a long time, Nanny. Well. Now that you found me, you don't need that anymore, do you? No, but but I won't let you tell brother what I did. What was that? I I hid that bottle in your room, Nanny. After you left, I I I had to, you see, because. They... they didn't want me any longer. They... they wanted me to leave. Even George. It was unkind. No! Give it to me. Christine? No. No, you... you... you'll only punish me if I do. I won't. I promise. Cross, cross your heart. Cross my heart. You, 
You won't tell Daddy? Not a word. Oh, no. No, I, I, I don't believe you. You, you. you don't love me. You, you don't love me. You love the baby. You all love the baby. Daddy! I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. All right, I'll stop it. I hate you. No. No, you can't have it. It's mine. He's gone now. Oh. Yes, he's... He's gone. So you must be good. And... And then... Daddy will love me again. Yes, dear. And I love you. You know that. Do you? Nanny... Really? Yes. I do. Oh, Nanny. Nanny, don't punish me. I, I didn't mean to be naughty. I'm not going to punish you. I'm sorry, Nanny. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's all right. It's all right. Nanny's here. Our story ends happily for Frida and the Daly family. As for Christine, the authorities saw to it that she was placed in a sanitarium where she received psychiatric help. My own story has taken a turn for the better. I find I can face anything now. I have reached a new plateau of maturity. Next week we shall return with another story and more therapy. The next time someone tells you that I Love Lucy is the same as The Lucy Show, tell them there are big differences. For example, I Love Lucy is in black and white. The Lucy Show is mostly in color. I Love Lucy was filmed in the 1950s. The Lucy Show was filmed in the 1960s. I Love Lucy features stars from old Hollywood. The Lucy Show features old Hollywood stars. Don't just take our word. Compare for yourself. Watch I Love Lucy and The Lucy Show back to back on Sunday Night Lucy. Sundays on Nick at night. She got her boots at Payless. I thought she was kidding. I mean, come on, Payless? I mean, these were really hot boots. So I checked it out. She wasn't kidding. These were really hot boots. Fashion boots, sport boots, western boots. I gotta say, Payless is definitely happening. Hey, I didn't believe it either. Believe it. Now at Payless, really hot boots are on sale starting at just $14.99. For styles you've gotta see to believe. <sighs> Who'd have guessed? Payless. Nick. At night, a TV viewer's dream. It's just something to every screen. For your viewing pleasure. A TV viewer's dream. 
This election day, Nick at Night wants you to vote. Then come home to election night on Nick at Night. You won't get up to the minute returns, but you will get eight episodes packed with election drama. Petri for City Council, the Great Patty Cathy debate, and a campaign promise you can count on. I believe in something, I speak out. Later, if I change my mind, I'm not afraid to speak out again. Do your part and watch election night on Nick at Night, Tuesday night at 8, 7 central. Brought to you by Sears Portrait Studios and Energizer Batteries.